All right, here we go, Tony Yeo. Back again, baby. Vlad Welcome TV. back to Vlad TV. Vlad got me hot, man. I got a shout out, Vlad. I got the Passport Apparel for you. Yep. I got a gift for you, man. Yep. Y'all check that out on PassportBoys.com. That's right. You know what it is, man. I'm back, man. That's shout right. out you out on the Breakfast Club. Thank you. Shout out to Charlemagne Envy, Power 105. Yep. You know, it's been a good year for me. Yep. Uh, thank you for the free Yeo shirt. We're going to show oh, that. Oh, definitely at, uh, got the free Yeo shirt the and the Passport Boy shirt for you. Come on. You my right. guy, man. I love Vlad. That was You've been getting a lot of threats lately, though. A lot of people on your ass. What do you mean? Who? Who's on my ass right now? I see you got new security, though. I like you got the suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all better be careful. He got, he got the new security now. Um, Who, Who's mad at me now? I seen Troy Ave on your ass. I stay out of the internet stuff. Yeah. And the people was kind of mad at um, the BTB uh, Savage interview. We could talk about that. That was kind of crazy. We could talk about that. You know what it felt like? No disrespect to you, but it felt like you added fuel to the fire. That's what people feel like. They're like, yo, Vlad added fuel. Even though a rapper's going to come up here and the artist is going to come up here and say whatever they want to say. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you talk about a person that you killed, right, online, mm -hmm. and rest in peace to BTP Savage, and the dude that got killed, because I, you know, I stay out of the politics. Rest yeah. in peace. Just, you know, we need to stop the violence. Period. But you know, um, when you talked about when he talked about the murder, four days later he got killed, and then he and then standing in the blood too with the pictures. Yeah. So it's like you got to understand the internet could add fuel to the fire with stuff. That's how people felt about you. Like yo, fuck Vlad. I seen a lot of fuck Vlads, but I'm like Vlad is my guy. You know, but I'm you. I see you pay for good security, so you know I, you're a smart guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, rest in peace to BTB Savage. Rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace to the victim who died uh, right, during right. that robbery attempt. It's a very sad situation. You know, what I mean, we we spoke online. Uh, you know, because he uh, he was announcing the whole thing himself. Right after after the you know he survived. You know, he he survived essentially an attempted murder himself. Uh, and he wanted to come in. He was excited about it. He said, oh, I want to make it a soldier boy thing. You know, I actually had the DMs from him. When he came in, we did the interview. And look, I, I was the victim of a home invasion myself. So I, I understand what it's like you to was? have someone. Yeah, I survived a home invasion. Hey. Yeah. I ain't yeah. So, so I'm very much into people protecting themselves when their lives are at oh, risk. Oh, no, secure. I believe security is is a is a is a is a I mean, if you're going to throw money in the strip club, throw 10,000 in the strip club and don't want to pay security, to me you just an idiot. Or right. Throw 5,000 or a couple of grand, just pay for the security. It, it, it makes sense. Well, yeah, but beyond the security, if someone comes into your home and attempts to harm you, you have you know, the right to protect yourself at the highest level. Yeah, you could, of course. That's how I feel. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Course. Like, I had someone jump in through no, a window I, in a house I, that no, I was at. I, und I understand that. Home invasion, of course. Right. I understand that. Exactly. But what I'm saying is when you go on the internet and you talk about it, rest in peace to that man, a lot yes. of people is mad at you. I understand. I understand. I mean, but listen. that's business. That's the business. Well, look, you know. He came in and we had a conversation. He laid out exactly what had happened. Dur during the conversation, uh, I said, is he worried about retaliation and so forth, as he should be. And he, you know, he felt like he wasn't worried about it and so forth. I also said, you know, should you move away? You know, have you considered moving now, out of your city? Every, listen, for every artist out there, you make it, just just move away. Right. That's the best thing that was uh, was taught to me. When I came home out of prison, 50 Cent had me in Battery Park. I could look at the Statue of Liberty. Right. That's why I always shout out 50 every time I talk because he realized if you stay in the neighborhood, you're going to get killed. Yeah. That's just what it is. G-Unit was one of the one of the groups that was 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 public enemy in New York City to everybody. The police, the streets, everybody, right? But at the end of the day, 50 had a mind to say, yo, let's turn this into business. And then when you look, when you move out the hood, you realize everything is a business. Mm -hmm. Where's crime going to be in the next couple of years? What do you think? Where is it going to be? Do you? Yeah. I mean, like, like I'm talking to Lisa Everett. Shout to Lisa Everett. I'm yeah. talking to her for an hour yesterday. Do you realize the police department have, like, touch DNA? Like, if you touch somebody's jacket, they can get the DNA off that. Yeah. They got... Cameras, they can use cameras off ATMs. They can use, mm -hmm. they got, <laughs> what are you going to be able to do? Now they got the uh, GPS dart. Yep. Instead of chasing you, they could, 
They got the robotic dogs now. What the, like, <laughs> you're not getting where, away. So, so we, we got all caught. this. And you've seen the mayor of New York City. You've seen the robotic dogs now. Yep. That's going to be in Times Square now in a, in a robotic uh, um, robots that they got, offices or whatever. Yeah. Now, what, do you, what crime are you going to be able to commit in a couple of years? Like, what can you do? None. None. You can't commit anything. And if you commit a crime, all the police do is... They're going to go back to the cameras. Yep. Connect the dots. Show show where you came it from. Find your month. address. It might take two months. They're going to come get you, and it's a closed case. Yep. Because they're going to use every camera they could possibly get to trace your ass back to where you at. Mm-hmm. They don't care if you went to Timbuktu and back. They're going <laughs> to find your ass. Yes. So it's like I'm talking to Lisa, and I'm like, damn, where? So where's crime lead? Like, where's, like? Some real RoboCop shit going on. Remember mm-hmm. RoboCop the movie? Yeah, absolutely. That shit is crazy. The yeah. GPS dart was like, yo, why chase him? We just hit him with the GPS dart. That's F- it. Find your car later. And you can't get it off there. Oh, really? You can't. It's not like you could pull it off there. They got some shit where it stays on there. So I'm just crazy. watching the news like, damn, where's crime going to be, man? Because, yeah. yo, bro, it's it's not even it's not even worth it. Yeah. Well, you, you know, really think I- about it. I mean, but back to your your question about BTB Savage, man, Mm -hmm. listen, you know, we got the phone call first that he had passed away, you know, before the world knew about it. Yeah, condolences to his mom, you know. Yeah, it was, man, it was so sad when I got that phone call because we had done the interview maybe two weeks before, but it took us maybe about a week or so. I pray to God every day that I I beat the odds, you know, G-Unit was one of the rap groups that had beef with so many yeah. Names that, you know, were reputable guys in the streets. Yeah. So I always pray every day when I see these artists just get get killed like that. But we in different times now. Well, you know, and, and 50 obviously ran his mouth about people who he's beefing with and stuff like that. As, I as, mean, as, as I did mean, everyone but, else. But but that's him being in number one position. That's exactly. gonna be, you know, that's that's gonna be it. When you on when you on top, people's gonna come at you. Mm-hmm. You know, right. that's just, just the game. Yeah. But, you know, when I, when I got that phone call from someone that was in the area that said, hey, this news report, this is actually BTV Savage. It was like, damn, like like four days before we had we had done the interview, but two hours before he got killed, he had posted a picture of himself in a pool of blood of no, the I victim. I've seen that online. That was, that was crazy. That, that was absolutely crazy. Yeah, that was, and, that was um, nuts. You know, there, there was a story circulating saying that he didn't want to talk about it. And I cut that part out of the interview. That's false. Right. That's a hundred percent false. Yeah. And if that's true, that they should release that footage because that's just not true. We we would never do that. Like he, what you saw in that interview was start to finish his his uh, stream of thought. Right. Nothing was even cut during the course of that interview. And I mean, it, it's just it's just horrible. It's it's a horrible situation. I'm sad about it, but ultimately, th- this is part of what we do is we get these types of stories and we we deal with very controversial topics. And sometimes, when you deal with controversial topics, you get controversial effects that happen afterwards. And, and this this is just part of the job that we do. I mean, listen, I have an interview that hasn't dropped yet. Uh, that's about to drop with Hurricane Chris. He just beat a second degree murder of a guy that he killed in self defense. Oh yeah, I just seen you beat that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So so we will continue to do these types of interviews, and it, it is going to be very sad if something happens to, to people in these situations. But this is ultimately the type of stories that, that we cover. Um, listen, we've interviewed Sammy the Bull, who killed like 13 people. That is true. You, you see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, With all yeah, these yeah, mafia that, guys that, that were, that were yeah, that's, essentially that's, mass that's, murderers. Like, it's not just focused on hip-hop or rappers. Like, it goes all across the board. And like right. I said, I was the victim of a home invasion myself that I survived that got very, very bloody you know, during that whole situation. So I'm very much for people protecting themselves completely if someone enters no, no, their no, home. No, 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 I understand. I just, no, I, listen, I'm not mad at you. Vlad. I'm just telling you, I was watching online. A couple of people mad at you. And I see you got new security, got the suit on. People are going to be mad. I remember <laughs> when I when I interviewed No Plug, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over the with situation. The fresh, with the bankroll yeah. fresh. Situ- people <clears throat> mad. You know, with the bankroll fresh situation, absolutely. Right. And, and ultimately, uh-huh. I mean, I remember Charlemagne was mad at me and me and him had a falling out over that until later when the footage was released that actually showed that uh, Bankroll Fresh pulled out the gun and shot first and they fired in in response. Yeah, I see and that's what happened. And then like when me and Charlamagne talked to him, he was like, yeah, m- my bad about that. I mean, I didn't, you, know, you know, it's it's the streets. It's just, you know, yeah. the streets is the streets, but the internet is the, is the fuel to the fire now. And everybody knows that. That's yeah. just what it is now. Because before, you know, if two guys had a beef in the streets, 
we might not see each other. You might have just heard a motherfucker. Yo, he said this or said that. Now a motherfucker's going online. Fuck your moms, your girl. Fuck your kids. Yeah. And so the internet is the fuel to the fire of of any drama, any right. beef. Right. And let me just point out is that unfortunately mm -hmm. the the young men and women today they escalate it further than you've ever seen it before. When you and I were young. Right. No, but you got to remember well, no, this. Hold on, hold on. Let me go just ahead, finish my thought. Let me just finish my thought. When you were beefing with someone, think about all the beefs that you had back in the day. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go and say, I'm going to smoke your dead homie? You know what I mean? I I'm going to make a song about your friend being dead and me putting that person in a blunt. Like, you've never heard that back in the day. Now, with... Chief Keef and all of them, you know, they started all that and that became popular. It spread to like Jacksonville and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. I have never seen someone post a picture of one of their enemies' blood on the floor with them like showing off their watch and, and everything else like that. BTV Savage took it to a level that I hadn't seen before. Yeah, that's what I say. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's the internet. Yeah. It's the fuel to the fire. Yeah. And not saying the internet is a bad thing because the internet, you know, you got people like... Jake Paul, his brother Logan Paul, that like, are making millions of dollars and as big as a Floyd Mayweather and these other, you know, mm -hmm. other boxes off the internet and YouTube. You got all these TikTok influencers getting paid. You got you. You got Joe Buttons. You got um, Drink Champs. You got all these mm -hmm. Gillian, Gillian Wallow. You got all these people making millions of dollars that every... And all y'all people motivate us. I watch all the greats. Y'all are the greats now. You talked about the list. Mm -hmm. Joe Button's on number one. Who was number two? Uh, academics. Academics number two. Shout out to Academics. Who was number three? Charlemagne, um, I think. Charlemagne, of course. Four was what? Get the Let's list. Look it up. Let's look complex. This is the lane I want to get into, and I, I respect everybody. Like I'm, I'm, I'm learning from watching all the greats do this podcast right here. Uh, hold on. All right, and this is the list was based on individuals, not. Uh, entity. So, for example, Nori was on the list, but Drink Champs is not, meaning that they're focusing on the individuals. See what I'm saying? Right. So, Joe Bunn was one, Academics was two, mm -hmm. Charlemagne was three. Shout out to everybody. Uh, Gillian Wallow are four, mm -hmm. Nori's five, uh, Kai Kanat, Sanat. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. He got the, yeah. He got I the apologize twitch. for mispronouncing his name. Is it Sanat? I think it's. Yeah, so not Kanat. Sanat. Yeah. Kai Sanat. But I know six. he got Twitch on a lot. Yeah. Uh, Carisha is seven. Yep, definitely. City Elliot girl. Wilson is eight. Mm -hmm. I'm nine. Math Hoffa is 10. Oh, shit. Definitely. Shout to Math Hoffa, too. I got to shout Math Hoffa out. I ain't going to lie. Me and his yeah. interview did do some numbers, man. I do. I shout out to Math Hoffa. I'm glad man. he's number 10. That's my man. Math Hoffa was my friend way before he started. Right. No, I know that. Man. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've right. always told him that he could be bigger than what he's doing right yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. And I'm and glad that he's actually. He came a long way, man, because yeah, his show up. is great. Everybody that's on that list, definitely, I look up to, you know, um, in, in the podcast, YouTube business, mm -hmm. you know, old and new. You know, y'all put in work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. It is what it is. Shout out to you. Let's switch gears for a second. Uh huh. LSU. Oh, yeah, of course. That's the hand came dance. Out. Shout to Andrew Reese. Shout to Caitlin Clark. But really, yes. Andrew Reese, she took it to a whole nother level. Right. And John Cena, we got to shout him. Right. Well, in our last interview, what's ironic is mm -hmm. that we talked about the hand dance and how mm -hmm. John Cena mentioned that he got it from you. Right. And it was I, like his little brother or something. Yeah, did his, it little, or? his little brother was doing a dance. You know, yeah. I, you know, that was the dance that I like. I tell everybody, TMZ, they asked me and I'm like, it was created because I really was on the run the right. whole time. You were trying to hide your identity. Yeah, I always, I, it was the most exciting time for me because I'm on the run. I'm, you know, I'm flying to Brazil. I'm flying to Barcelona as my brother. Um, it was it was crazy. I'm, I'm around Eminem. I'm in Detroit. I'm in L.A. the whole time on the run. So when I'm in the club video, I'm like, yo, this is going to come to an end one day. So I was like, let me just try to at least stay a little low key. Because come on, bro, you're going to eventually have to turn yourself in the bigger we got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, didn't Flavor Flav technically do that first? I Flavor Flav had some like, but you know, and I'm in respect to Flav and Public Enemy, one of the best groups in the world, legendary. Mm -hmm. But like I said, this dance was created by me just to cover my face from the police, and that's <laughs> the honest to God truth. I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. Um. So in that game, mm -hmm. uh, the white girl Caitlin Clark actually did it first, right? To Angel, right. 
And then Angel did it back to her when they started to win. Of course. So it's funny that everyone was harping on Angel for doing it when the white girl was doing it first. I mean, some white privilege there. You know <laughs> it's white is. privilege? I mean, you know, you got, yo, listen, I got, I got one of my friends. Um, he had a uh, McLaren, right? No plates on it. He's driving down the highway. He's doing 100 miles per hour. N- never got pulled over. He said, yo, he, he taps me. He says, Tony, you believe we did that? I said, yo, bro, got the white privilege, bro. You good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me do that with the poo shiesty on. I'm going to get pulled. McLaren, no plates. I'm going to get pulled. Look, you got this 16-year-old kid, right? I think he's 16. I forgot his name. It just happened just the other day. I forgot what area he is, but I know he knocked on the wrong door. He went to go pick somebody up. I heard about this. 16 years old black kid. Knocked on the wrong door. The white guy shot him through the through the door. Yeah. Sad. That's sad. You didn't even see, ask the guy information. What do you want? You didn't have to open your door now. You could have just been like, what can I do for you through the door? Right. Yeah. And that guy, and that man hasn't been charged yet. If he don't get charged. Yeah, that's horrible. That's horrible. That's going to show you white privilege. If that was a black man that shot a white kid like that, he would have got charged. Let's just keep it real. Yeah. You know? Do you hear about what happened in Detroit? What happened in Detroit? So in Detroit, I think over the weekend, this family had ordered uh, like a, a few pizzas, like like three pizzas. Oh, I did see that. And, and pizzas somebody came to the wrong address. When the and they first ate family, the pe- they yeah. ate the pizzas and in an altercation shootout happened. But you got to understand that's Detroit. Detroit is like it's it's no joke in Detroit. So I could see something like that happen in Detroit. Detroit is as crazy as anywhere else. I could almost envision you getting to some shit like this, like early. <laughs> no, but, back but to see, the day. I'm smart enough. Look, I'm smart <laughs> enough to know if you in the wrong hood and I eat your pizza, that could potentially end up to a shootout. I'm going to be like, yo, your food is over here because I don't want the problem. Okay, fair I'm enough. not going to eat your food. You know how many times a DoorDash delivery, you know, came to my neighbors or, or DoorDash delivery or come to your house? You think I'm going to be petty enough to eat the food? When you eat the food, you know it's on. People don't right. play with their food. When I'm overseas with murder, we like, and, and like say there's a whole bunch of food, and you know what I'm saying? I think, I think, was it murder? I, I think I went and murder joint, got a fry. And he was like, yo, he looked at me like, <laughs> like we was in jail. Like you don't play with people's fries right. and, you know, right. murder Cause, don't cause play the, with his fries. Well, you, the, you know what I'm saying? The, the first, fa- well, the second family that got the pizza ended up eating the pizza. When the first family went to confront them, an argument started. 30 rounds got fired. You, you, it, Five people got shot. Now look, now let's now let's Five people got now let's shot think over about, some pizza. Now th- let's think about this. It makes sense though. My food get delivered to your house. Yes. You eat my food. Yes. We we was hungry as a motherfucker now. Picture you hungry and the playoffs is on right now. Right. We watching the playoffs. You eat my food. I go to your house because they saying we dropped it here. Here's the picture. Yeah. Oh, that's the neighbor's house. Now you get mad because you don't have the courtesy to even bring my food to my house. Yo, yo, neighbor, I got your food right. here. Yo, you know what? Come to my crib. You might have, you might give me a slice. Yo, come to my crib, get a slice or whatever. Watch the game. Yeah. They ate the food, didn't care, right? That's yeah. what you're saying, right? Right. Ate the food, didn't care. Then when I come to your house and maybe, yo, at least pay for my fucking food. That's what I was thinking. There's all, the shootout all, all right there. Was say, okay, cool. It was, it was $100, $40. Yeah, they, here you go. They Our refused, bad. We didn't know they refused it was supposed to, to pay for the food. Yeah. That's it. But it's 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 the whole thing is respect. Yeah. Why, I'm, why I made it to this age in the streets and move around? Because I have respect for people, bro. It's all about respect, knowing yeah. who's who and what's what. Even with the police. when po- Did you, Listen, uh, and me, look, I never really had problems with the police when I was okay. on the block. You know why? Because if I got something on me, if I'm dirty, anything on me, and the police used to be like, yo, get the fuck out of here. All right, peace. I'm not gonna argue with the police if I got okay. something on me. Did you respect the guy? That, did you respect the guy that you beat in the dice game? Which one? At the barber shop. What you mean? The guy that you beat in the dice game, and you wouldn't give him a little extra money to walk away, and you started doing the dance after beating him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is nah, that, is that I mean, respectful? See, you gotta understand. Dice which, which triggered. You know, we talked about this last time. Which triggered a shootout, a friendly shootout right, right, in your a world. A friendly shootout. But what was I'm that? S- was that respectful? What do you mean? 
When well, you said you treat everyone with respect, that's why, you know, you're of good Of course, if we gambling and I'm winning and I do the dance, my man Halim used to do this. Rest in peace to proof. We, we took mad of D12 money. Because when you're rolling, you gamble, right. you get excited. If I'm about to win five grand, oh, shit, he aced. Oh, yeah, that's why dice games get dangerous. Right. That's why I don't play dice no more. I don't, <laughs> like, I'm not with it because it get dangerous and people get in their feelings when they lose the rent money. Right. Or lose you, you, the, the, the shop, the grocery money. So I realized that being on the block. One, three, four, and God Brewer used to have the biggest dice games in the alley. Mm. You could ask 50, you could ask anybody. We used to have, we had alleys. They closed them off now. But, like, that's the infamous hood. We used to have crazy dice games over there. Right. Well, I'm just saying that everyone's not always respectful all the time. Everyone has their moments. You know what I'm saying? Nah, everyone wants you, to stunt a little bit on the other person nah, when Vlad, they got one up on When you're gambling, tempers flare. Right. When you're gambling in the hood and you got a bet on the line and you lose and the person start dancing, right. oh, See, I'm this, happy. You're right. mad, of course. Right. But this goes back to the 48 Laws of Power, which is once you win, you never go past your mark. See what I'm saying? Once what? you win, you stop. You don't rub the person's face in it after you win because that could turn a win into a loss by upsetting the but person. But everybody know in, in the street, street code, when you ask me for a walk, that's a sign of disrespect. Don't ask me for no fucking walk. If I take 10000 from you and you be like, yo, can I get a walk? You think I'm soft for something. Yeah, a walk that, no. means you give him some of his money back. Nah, that's not happening. No, that's what a walk where, is. Where yeah. we from, that's a sign of weakness. Don't you? Because if, if a dude is a straight up gangster, you're not going to ask him for no walk back. You're just going to take that loss. Like, damn, that, he got me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But if you feel something sweet, like you're going to ask me for a walk? Nah, nigga, that's a sign of disrespect. I'm not giving you shit back. Because mm -hmm. if you would have took all my money, would you gave me something back? I done lost rent money on the block, too. Shit happens. Re-up, everything. Shit happens in a dice game. You just got to walk away with the loss. Yeah, but if you got shot, you'd probably think of the situation a little bit differently. But I didn't. Right. You got lucky. It was no, luck. No, he got, the other guy got lucky. Everyone got lucky. Right? Everyone got lucky that no one got shot. Right? Uh, yeah. Everyone got lucky. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's being young and if being If you got shot, if you got shot and you got shit bagged over that, you would think, oh, I should have probably played it differently. If you shot him and he pressed charges and you went to prison, you would have think, oh, I should have played that differently. You see what I'm saying? Everyone got lucky that it was a shootout yeah, that everyone walked away right. from. You're right. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Back to the LSU thing. So, mm -hmm. they both did it to each other. Right. And uh, was it? The, the owner of Barstool Sports called, uh, what's her name? Um, yeah, everybody, listen. Angel, it, like, a, like, a, like a classless he, piece of listen, shit or even something Gilly, like that. Even Gillian Wallow said that he was fucking out of line. Exactly. And I somebody agree. else, and what Shaq corrected somebody to, and Shaquille O'Neal said somebody was out of line. Right. I mean, we're talking about a girl that's still in college. My daughter, 19. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? She's a baby. And y'all attacking her like that. What's the problem? Yeah. You know, sports is competitive. That's what sports is about. It's a comp every sport is competitive. Just like rolling dice, it's competitive. A dude right. slam dunk, oh, you can't see me. Roll a <laughs> dice, oh, you can't see me. It's competitive. Even when you play 2K. And don't ever disrespect my video game people again, bro. And yo, y'all look out for the passport. We coming too. Shout out to Steve. Okay. Cookies. <laughs> y'all look out for everything. Passport power. But look, don't ever disrespect video game people. There's times where I done ran my head in the refrigerator because of... um playing Madden or going crazy over really? 2K. You ran guns, your head in the Guns even got drawn for 2K. You pulled out guns over playing NBA 2K, 2K. yes. Guns got drawn. Okay, I want to hear this story. I want to hear this Ooh, story. Ooh, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm, so you're playing. You don't have to name names. You don't have to name names. You're playing I'm just giving NBA you a story. 2K. I'm going to give you two guys okay. are playing. Okay. I'm just going to give you a story. I'm not going to say it's me. Two guys are playing. Okay. They're playing. She gets heated. You're in the other guy's house. He don't like the way you're talking. He go get the gun. I'm not saying it was me or who it was, but I've seen shit like that. So what I'm saying is 2K gets crazy. Now, look, this is what else propels it too. Now, when you play 2K, you could play dudes from other hoods. Mm -hmm. So people be online. They don't, they don't play the actual game. They play the, the, the court, the street game, mm -hmm. like on the courts and all that. And they play each other this hood against this hood. Shit get critical. Mm. They be online talking shit. Video games can cause beef too. Well, uh, what did you think about uh, Jill Biden wanting to invite both teams to the that, White House? That was corny because the losing team, what's, what's the sense of winning 
if the losing team could come too. Right. That makes I've never no heard sense. of this before. I've yeah. never heard not yeah. the Super Bowl, not the NBA because Finals. Because you know why? They, they fans of Caitlin Not the World Clark. Series. And not taking nothing from Caitlin Clark. I heard she's an excellent player. She's oh, going to yeah. make it. But come on. You can't. Come on. It's, it's white privilege, bro. Like, let's not nah, lie. Let's right. keep it real. No, just listen, but, just like you, my friend in the McLaren with no plates doing 100. Yeah. It's white privilege. Right. Because even huh? Caitlin said. What? She wasn't bothered by the whole hand thing. She's like, this is just sports. We're competitive. We're, we're both playing at the highest level. She wasn't offended by it. Everyone else was taking like offense Bro, by listen, it. I got white friends. I, I got black friends. I don't like to talk. In media training, they say, don't talk about religion. Don't talk about race. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to take nothing personal from me. But when it's right there in your face like that, yeah. oh, this little cursing at, a, cursing at Angel Reese and everything they were saying, it just got carried away. If anything, Caitlin Clark did it too. Y'all didn't say anything about it. It's because Andrew Reese won. Now, if Caitlin, let me ask you this question. If Caitlin Clark won, do you think she would have been getting the flat back for doing that to Andrew Reese? No. Well, there yeah. goes your answer. Well, I feel you. Well, well there goes your answer. Well, they, you just yeah, said no, it. I feel you. There goes I, I your feel, answer. No, I think it was a racist thing for the wife of the president to say. Yeah. And I felt like all the comments and everything took away from the rest of the team. Yeah. Like, um, what's the other girl on the team that's real good? See, I want the short one. Uh, on LSU? She's a rapper too. I, I know her for rapping. She's on LSU. Uh, She's a very good rapper. Flage Johnson? Flage Johnson. Yeah, I apologize if I mispronounced yeah. your name. Yeah, let's like, there's a rest, there's another, there's a, other people on the team as well as the coach and yeah. as well as everybody on the team. So that's taken away from the actual W to win. Of course, Andrew Reese and Flor J, they stars and the rest of the team, but it's a team effort. Yeah. So that took away from everything when people from ESPN started commenting mm -hmm. crazy and getting out crazy. And of course, we gonna protect her because you know, that's our black queen. You know, at the end of the day, bro, I don't like to get into the race thing, but we black. My daughter's black, you know, my mother's black, everybody's black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like, we, when you see it out like that, it gets a little sad. Like, damn, why are they going in on it like that? It's just, yeah. it's just basketball. Well, uh, Kanye actually mentioned the Yayo dance on his first album on a song called Glory. Definitely. Shout to Kanye. I remember he that. He said, uh, on nights when Ye romance, cameras flash so, mu so much, much, they got to do the Yayo, Yayo dance. dance. Uh. And the shirts is coming soon. Got mm -hmm. those. Yeah? Yeah. You, you know what you should have? You should have, like, remember those... Uh, those things What's that? where like, you know, when you look at it, it kind of like the pictures that kind of move. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the actual, like based on how you oh, angle it, the good, picture that's moves. A, that's a good idea. Yeah, so you should make the, the yayo dance we with, might the, need to with edit the hand those, that we moves. We don't want them to know what we're doing next, but <laughs> the shirts are coming soon. <laughs> that's what I'm so saying. You can't see me, baby. There you go. There you go. Well, since our last interview, uh, the tax stone trial happened. Right. Uh, tax is a friend of mine. Uh, he actually did his last interview before he got locked up That's here. That's why Troy Evans on your ass, man. Probably, yeah. It's got extra security over here. Troy, Troy's a chump. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been saying this. Troy's a chump and he got his man killed. Flat out. Shit. Flat out. And I'll say it. I'll say it. Because Troy had been pushing the line on people for months before that shit happened. Mm. For months before that shit happened. Remember the dude, I Love McConan? The, the gay rapper that was signed yeah, to OVO yeah, 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 up got, on a Tuesday. I remember he got pulled off the stage. Yeah, I remember that. By Banger. On behalf of Troy Ave. He got beat up on stage while performing with Ray Shremmerd because he had made a comment that he didn't like Troy Ave uh, freestyling on his beat. And, and Troy Ave was like, oh, that, you come to New York, we're going to see you. That Tuesday dude was like, he was cool. He was like, no, it wasn't that. Too. He wasn't like no gangster. Nah. Exactly. Just was like, uh, a journalist who wrote a negative review of Troy Ave got beat up. Okay. But let's add it Troy, to Troy. Troy, Troy no, no, no. I, I, I want to know. Listen, <laughs> he I, gonna, I'm, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I don't want to be in no net next to You're not in the middle of it. I'm saying it. I'm saying Damn, it. And bro. I've been saying it. Well, you got security, so you could. <laughs> I've been, been saying it. You know, at the end of the day, Troy Ab didn't go to, to Banger's funeral. He did? No. He wasn't invited. Talk to Banger's brother. See how he feels about the whole situation. Mm. He was using this. Troy Ab threatened me over text messages, trying to be tough with me because I wouldn't play his music. Troy was thinking that he was a gangster and he got caught up in the situation of trying to push the line on somebody that wasn't going to let the line be pushed. Right. Ultimately. And someone died in the process and it's horrible what happened. And, you know, my man Tax is now found guilty on a bunch of charges.
and the fucked up part about this case, because because I was talking to Tax's lawyer about this and so forth, mm-hmm. is that when it comes to cases, particularly in New York, I don't know what it's like in other states, but you can't actually bring up the victim's background in a in a murder case. You see what I'm saying? You can't say, oh, the victim was out beating people up and everything else like that, and I was scared for my life. This is why I may have had to, you know, protect myself. You just can't mention that to the jury. So therefore, the trial went a certain type of way, and of course, Troy took the stand as well. I mean, my opinion on it, it's a sad thing over the internet because Tack Stone had a wonderful career that was blossoming. Oh, he'd be huge right now. He'd yeah, be up there yes. with, with, be with Willie, the, uh, you know, yeah, Gilly, uh, with Gilly Wallow and, and yeah. Nori and so, all that. Yeah, his yeah. last interview was was Meek Mill. Right. And and Troy Ave, you know, his music, he was definitely doing his thing. And and Banger was a cool dude. You know, rest in peace to Banger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I met him before. He was all right. Yeah, I, I never met him. But, you know, it was it's a tragic thing on both sides for me. That's all I could say. You know, yeah. I did I did have songs with Troy Ave. So I'm not going to sit up here and bash okay. him and say nothing bad about him because that's that's not my business. You know what I mean? As for as for Tax Stone, another good guy too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like when I got beef, niggas ain't in my beef. So one thing about me is I never get in people's beef. Yeah. Because if I had a drama or any drama I had with, with, with us and G-Unit, that was on us to handle. I never... So when people got their beef, I kind of just stay away from it. You know right. what I mean? So and and on top of that, it, it's you know? like you may have beef with someone, but that person don't have beef with that person. So you can't, you know, translate. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I'm I, I'm okay with Ja Rule. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know you, you guys don't, have problems. Don't say but... that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yo, security, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Start flipping in here. <laughs> you want to take that don't part out? Don't say it. Nah, it's keep it. Nigga, keep it? Keep okay. it. Okay. All right. You cool with Ja Rule now? You cool with the ops? I've always been cool. Nah, with but a it's lot of but people. you know what? It's the music business. Like I used to care. I really don't give a fuck. Right. You're you're cool with people. I probably got beef with. Cool. And that's just it. Who I'm cool? I, I don't know. I'm not cool with. Who, I don't know who, who you got beef. Who knows? I don't know who you got. You don't got too many enemies out there. Man, I got more than than I would like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, man. Um, tax zone's facing up to twenty five years. Minus a six year. Uh, I mean, like served. I said, it's a sad thing because up. you know how I look at it. I just look at him in this podcast where he's like one of the guys that was coming up before it got as big as it as it is. Mm-hmm. So where would he be now? Like right now, he would be on that top ten list that you know Halfa and everybody else is on. And congratulations to everybody on that list because I'm not a hater. I'm a congratulator. So what I'm saying is, I always imagine where he would be if he was here. Yeah, cause any at, at the end of the day, if some internet beef, some bullshit, some bullshit, somebody's dead, somebody's in jail, two careers, yeah, or kinda, you know, yeah. And I mean, regardless of where Taxone would be right now, career wise, he wouldn't be in a cage, so he'd be better off where he is right Definitely. now. Period. But a lot of shit don't be worth it. Yeah. No, it's sad, man. It's sad. I hope that he gets, uh, you know, a lot less than twenty five years. Me I'm too. hoping. I'm Me hoping. too. I, I hope that too, because Tag yeah. Stone's a good guy. And like yeah. I said, rest in peace to Banger. He was a good guy. I got a chance to meet him a couple of times. And Troy Ave was a good guy. So, you know, it's just a terrible thing that, you know, that internet shit, the propel shit. That's why I stay, I try to stay, when I do interviews with you, I try to be kind of politically correct because mm-hmm. I don't need to be, because no beef get, beef don't never die, I just get old. I tell people that all the time. Yeah. So I'm already on point watching my back from shit from the past. Of course. But listen, uh-huh. but what I'm telling you is that sometimes you just got to watch how you say because, you know, the tongue is like a sword. They say yeah. that in the Bible, right? Yeah. And I think the the tongue is like a sword. Man. I mean, you got to be careful what you say. From my perspective also, with my personal experiences, mm-hmm. I feel that a lot of times why beef doesn't get squashed is that when you end up beefing with someone, a lot of times they'll bring in other people They'll talk about like your kids and shit. I mean, like look that. at look, my mom's crib got shot up twenty two times in 07. So That's what I'm saying. When 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 the beef brings go, comes to your family, your mother, mm-hmm. your sister. Right. And 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 you're like your family's in danger, houses are getting shot up. Yeah. People don't know how real it is. Yeah. It's, it's it, 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 you can't sleep at night without having a gun next to you. Um, um, you got fucking street anxiety. That's one of the projects I'm dropping soon, a little down the line. Street anxiety, because a lot of people, you know, come out of jail, they got street anxiety. A lot of people in the streets, 
Street anxieties, hustle, street anxiety. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so when it went, when I learned, when the beef went to my mom's and stuff, that never happened. That was the first time. So, you know, we have beef with all kinds of dudes. It may be a fight or whatever, or whatever it may be, stabbing, shooting at that time, whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. But this beef went to my mom's and my sister and my niece. They could have got killed. And I'm 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 lucky because bullets is the stove. I tell people all the time, God's always been on my side. I pray every day before I leave the house. You know, and like I told you, everybody has their own God. Everybody believes what they believe in. Right? But Bullet was in the middle of the stove, two inches away from the gas line. Uh. So imagine that would have hit the gas line. Would have blown, blown up. Yeah, the whole house. And that's what happened. Something like, uh, what's the rap up from, um, you know what I'm talking about? His grandparents was in the house, and the house Oh, blew up. yeah. Uh... That's what that kind of reminded me of. So I've been through a lot, man, and it's just, it's, it's just a, a lesson, man. You got to chill out sometime. Honeycomb Brazy. Yeah, Honeycomb Brazy. Some, it was, you know, rest in peace to his grandparents and stuff, but it was similar to that. Because remember, they shot the house up and it blew up. Yeah. So that could have happened. The same thing could have happened to me, bro. Wasn't a, uh, the Fat Cat story, was, didn't they firebomb Fat Cat's family's house? I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe so. Maybe it was in the book Cop Shot. You ever read that one? No, but. You got to read Cop Shot. It's probably in there. Fat Cat came, was supposed to come home, and the feds gave him more time. I wonder how much more time he got. I think it's two years, three years. Yeah. Sad situation, man. Uh, sad situation. And uh, since our last interview, uh, XXXTentacion's killers were found guilty of murder. Yeah. All three of them got life in prison. Florida don't play with their laws? Yeah. People don't understand. Some of these states don't play, like Atlanta and Florida and Pennsylvania, Commonwealth. They don't play with their laws, and New York City stiffened up crazy, too. Mm -hmm. They're not playing, man. They're throwing natural life for breakfast. <laughs> That's what people, some young kids <laughs> out here. Natural you life know, for breakfast. You know, when we was younger, at least we wanted to party a little bit, you know, go on trips, mess with chicks. These kids now, they just want to drill. But they throwing natural life, like, for breakfast. Right. It seemed like, um, huh? I remember I was talking to, to Sean Prez about this. And, uh, right. and but, then you got to remember this. It's a high-profile murder. Yeah. So what the fuck they gonna do? Yeah. You bringing all this attention to our city? Okay, we gonna finish you. So if you do anything to any artist high profile, you gonna get slayed. Now L.A. with the pop smoke thing, the adolescents, the adolescents feel like we can get away with anything. Right. Because uh, the, the kid who one of the kids who pop, killed four pop years. smoke four years because he was, four uh, years. was he seventeen or sixteen. This is what I'm saying. So he going you know what's gonna happen? He gonna come home. He gonna get praised for that body in L.A. on on his set. And he gonna do more. He gonna do even more worse to crime, cause that's how it is. So when the when the, when the kids know, yo, I'm 14, I'm 12, I'm gonna do this little bit of time. I'm gonna come home. I'm good. But you're fucking your life up. Yeah. And 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 in the meanwhile. Yeah. Cause when you come home, you can't get no job with that felony on your back. Nobody wanna hire nobody with attempt murder. Right. Murder, gun possession, assault with a firearm. You're not getting a job nowhere. So you gotta either be an entrepreneur, which is great, mm -hmm. with YouTube to all the youth out here that's coming home and wanna do the right thing. With YouTube and Twitch and 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 and, and, and Instagram and getting bookings. That's the good thing about the internet for those guys that can't get a regular nine to five. They can they can start their own business. Shout out to all the new YouTubers. I don't care if you're talking about snitches on there. I don't care if you're talking about pets. I don't care which flowers, whatever it is, you're making your money instead of being on the street. Yeah. That's what I tell dudes all the time. Because they get mad at you. Man, he's a culture vulture. I'm saying, well, you know what? You got to put the work in and you can get as much money as Vlad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's a, true. He's a white guy. He's a culture vulture. Yo, you letting him control the narrative of the culture. He's been doing it for 16 years. I'm not mad at the guy. Yeah. It's like being a black hockey player. Yeah. I'm not mad at Eminem. I'm not mad at anybody. Yeah, you were the for you and Banks were mm -hmm. the first official Vlad TV interview. Yeah, it's the talk of New York, Tony Ayo. PLK Lloyd Banks, man. And you know what time? There's a lot of diamonds. We on VladTV.com. Yeah. yeah. Log on. 
Right. When, when someone actually said Vlad TV on video, it was you and Banks. Listen, I'm always going to have respect for this is 50.com for putting in the work. Vlad TV, mm-hmm. um, World Star, of course, yep. Recipe Q. Yep. And, and, and I, Forbes DVD, mm-hmm. The Come Up, Fendi. Yep. Um, French, what was French joint? Cocaine City. Cocaine City. Um, Smack. Smack, of course. Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. You got to shout out all these dudes. Dude. Yeah, it we, went we from, were the, the OGs yeah. before there was a yeah. YouTube. Before it was an uh, internet, it was, y'all, yo, we got to get on y'all DVDs. Yo, I'm coming to get some footage for my DVD. Right. Forbes, you, whoever, yeah, come get that footage. And that's how artists was, was getting out. Mm-hmm. Like, the goal was to be on every D. Every DVD I just named, well, that, was, that was the goal. These are the marketing geniuses right here. Mm. So I'm always going to shout them out. Thank you. Forbes DVD, I don't know. I don't, they website, I don't really, they don't really update it. I haven't checked nothing on there. Not they sure. A, Not sure. I mean, everyone had their own path. I mean, listen, French became very successful as a rapper. Definitely. You know what I mean? He transitioned and did did a lot well, of French shit. French to me was always a marketing genius. He's always mm. was kind of yeah. smart. Yeah, he was. He always knew. Still is. You know what I'm saying? He just was kind of ahead of his time. Yeah. And so was y'all because y'all got to think, y'all had the internet. Everything that we see on the internet was really on DVD back then. Mm-hmm. And you yep. had to go get the DVD, you was fiending to get it. Yep. So if some shit happened or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or some shit went down, you had to go get that actual DVD. You had to go outside and watch it. Uh-huh. Well, the uh, the XXX and Tassion case, what mm-hmm. I think people really should realize is that they stole $50,000 from X. There was three guys and a fourth guy that was like the getaway driver. Yeah, and he, he testified against them. The fourth guy testified against everyone he, he got five thousand, right? He's I heard he's getting about five years, you know, based on his cooperation. The other three guys that each got fifteen thousand dollars each are getting life in prison. Well, they got life in prison already. Life in prison for fifteen thousand dollars. Think about that. I mean, it's the dumbest Think shit. Think about that. I mean, and then and then look, they're gonna be waking you up up in the mountains and they're gonna be making you work for three cents an hour mm-hmm. for the rest of your life. Is it really worth it? Because all the real niggas that's in jail don't want to be in jail. All the real gangsters, the dudes that got natural life, the like really, really gangsters, they don't, they don't want to be in there, bro. Who wants to be in jail? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> but, but 15 grand ain't worth your life. Because when you're working for one cent an hour, <laughs> up top, watching your back in the showers, you know what I'm saying? Let's do the and math. Then, and then you got, and what, what makes this crazy is you're a target because you killed somebody that was high profile. So mm-hmm. when you go to jail and you kill a high profile celebrity, you're a fucking target. Mm-hmm. That celebrity could have fans, family, Yo, anybody. XXX and Tacion has, I believe, the most streamed hip hop album of all time. He, and, more than Drake, more than Jay Z, more you, than Eminem. And believe you me, people this, love listen, this guy, especially in Florida. Yes, rest in peace to X. He's a legend. He yeah. was as big as Pop before he died. That's what a lot he of people huge, to yeah. the youth. He was to, huge. To, yeah, to, to, to the my youth, daughter them, like his biggest To my pop. daughter yeah. and them, he was as big as Pop. I, I, I can now, see that. Now, yeah. now, now, listen to this. When you kill an artist like that, or you kill any artist, you go to jail, you're a target. You're you're definitely a target. People might want to test you. Yo, that's mm-hmm. the dude that that killed X. Yo, that's the dude that killed Nipsey. Yo, that's the dude that killed um Pop Smoke or this dude. You a target. Somebody might want to test you in the right environment. Yeah. Yeah. Look what happened to Eric Holder, the guy who killed Nipsey. Of course. Even a Big judge black eye. Look, the... Even a judge told him he was green lighted. Yep. Because they know, like, yo, they you know. green-lighted, you killed, especially you being from the West Coast demographic. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. Nobody, listen, nobody want to be in jail. I've been in jail before, and I did skid bids. I never did a year, two years, six months. I do skid bids. Them dudes that do long bids, 10 years, a dime, those are bidders. I've never been a bidder. I did been in jail two times and said, nah, this shit ain't for me. Yeah. Rikers Island, home of the boldest, that's where, you know, like, a lot of people be like, yo, Atlanta, Fulton County, and, and L.A. County, Rikers Island? Psh, you don't want to be there, brother. Yeah. You know, and that's where all the real gangsters come and play. Did I, tell you I, Barrow, did huh? I ever tell you I almost accidentally got sent to Rikers Island? You would have been shitting in your boots. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was arrested for a suspended license, and I was sent to Central Bookings. And you know in Central Bookings, they're, they're like transferring you room to room, you know, cell to cell, cell to cell, right. cell to cell. 
And one day they're like, okay, uh, Lubavni, blah, 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 come with me. And we're, they're, okay, they're all going to Rikers. And I'm like, what the fuck did they find on my record? Like, what? The, <laughs> did this mixtape shit catch up to me? I don't know what it is. And I'm, and I'm literally walking to Rikers in this long line. And like, oh, wait, 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 no, no. That guy's not supposed to be here. And they're, they're like, oh, oh, look how scared he looks. They're oh, like he laughing at me. I was like, was hell like, yeah. Oh. I was terrified. I don't want to go to home like, with the so how, how do I get up to Rikers you Island with this You don't want to go where they play Razor Tag for, for the seats in there. Yeah. No, I'm you good. Know, and I, I'm it, good. It's, it's, an, it's, it's definitely an experience going over that bridge and home of the boldest. You know, I know people talk Oof. about uh, um, Fulton County. Well, you mm-hmm. just seen some dude tied up in Fulton County. Yeah. So you them jails do get crazy too. Alabama and all them, like ain't, it's like there's no COs in there or something. <laughs> right. Because I seen one of them dudes tied up and um, it was online. Yeah, no. One of the well, YSL. Yeah, we had the, the YSL. Well, the YFN dudes allegedly, the YFN allegedly. dudes yeah. hogtied one of the YSL guys. Yeah, he was hogtied. Right. Yeah. But, but remember, uh, YFN Lucci was like, I think he was stabbed, or they tried to stab him. Like, like yeah. there's all types of. Wars that are going on like right I now. I said, man, I stay out of pe- people's yeah. beefs. It's a terrible beef because, it, it, you know, that beef kind of makes shit hot. So, you know, free Thugger, you know what I mean? And free wife and Lucci. Yeah. And because, wife you know, and- at the end of the day, it's, it's about black men getting their money and getting out the neighborhood, not yeah. going back. Like, we can't go backwards. That's what's always said to me. You can't never go backwards. You got to go forwards. That's why if you got to go someplace with a gun, I'd be like, now my brain tell me, nah, I'm good. If I got to go over here, nah, I'll avoid that. You got to bring a gun to go? Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm cool. I'd rather be somewhere Vlad. We going to Calabasas Country Club. Right. We're eating. The white guys are looking at us, like me and Hey, like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? <laughs> They're like, Vlad, what the fuck are you doing here? I got the poo shiesty mask on. Calabasas. <laughs> they, they made you take off your hat. The, they made you take your hat off at the Country Club right. in Calabasas. But it was an experience for me. I'm good. See, I love, I can eat beef patties and I can eat caviar pancakes. Mm-hmm. There's no difference to me. You know, yeah. I'm, I never change, but I always thank God for the experiences I had. And I'm like, yo, since God gave me these chances, let me be thankful and let me hang places where I don't have to bring a gun. Mm-hmm. Because all I cost is you was lawyer money. A lawyer, Scott Lehman, Steve Murphy, all these guys, El Chapo lawyer, these guys want 50000 a 100000 Bail money, the system. Oh, he's a high-profile artist. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Charge him a million dollar bail. <laughs> Luckily, they got bail reform now. You're right. Oh, shit. Now you're on house arrest. Now you got to pro... It, it, it's, it's a lose-lose situation when working. you catch a case, bro. Yep. It's just a lose-lose. It's a lose-lose money situation. You stress yourself out. You stress your family out. You know how it feels to go to court in the morning? Yeah. It's called a bubbly. You start farting and shit. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. You know you got a serious one, you start farting. You might fart in court. <laughs> <laughs> start farting. I've, been, I've caught a lot of dumb cases, you know. Some of them beat. Some of them I, you know, got in trouble for and got over. But, you know, like, shout out to everybody locked down because nobody wants to right. be there, bro. But you had the bubbly through all those cases, though. Yeah, of course. You get the bubbly. Anybody will tell you. Right. And let me just put this perspective for you guys, uh-huh. for, for everyone who's watching right now. For the three guys that just got life in prison, they're in their twenties, I think. That's Florida. Florida, no, you know uh, Florida. Let's, let's just say, Not let's just 20, say huh? they're all twenty-five years old and uh-huh. they live to the age of sixty-five. You know what I mean? They they, they pass away at the age of sixty-five. They're going to be in jail for for forty years. That fifteen thousand breaks down to three hundred seventy-five dollars a year for the rest of their life. That that's what they're going to prison for three hundred seventy-five dollars a year. Think about that. Let that really sink in. $375 a year for the rest of your life in prison, surrounded by men, no women, always watching your back, worried that an XXX Tentacion fan is going to stab you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Worried nah, about I'm, getting raped. They, they gonna like, get, all they that gonna, shit. They're going to get married, though, so they can get the conjugal visits. They got it. Okay. Because they ain't never coming home. But the whole thing is, what did you think was going to happen? Right. You're, you're, you're robbing. No, what I'm saying is if yeah, you kill a high-profile artist... This is the thing. You know Cameras what it is? are everywhere. Let's just keep it real with this era. There's no consequential thinking. You know how you think of the consequences? The youth are not having consequences thinking. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because what did you think was going to happen? But when they heard that life in court, you could play tough. <laughs> yeah. They was playing. No, no, no disrespect to them. Yeah, but one of them blew a kiss listen, to like the mother or something. Yeah, you, yeah. Could, you could play. Listen, you could play tough because you hurt. 
you're hurt. Mm-hmm. But when you hear that natural life, whoop, listen, you get back to that cell, woo wee, you gonna be like this. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, any ball. listen, any nigga will tell you, motherfuckers hurt when he got ten years. He just can't gotta be tough, can't cry. You know you about to be in jail with the real wolves, nigga. This shit mm-hmm. for the rest of your life, nigga. This ain't you living in the jungle. Cause jail is jail is I ain't even gonna say jail, prison. Cause jail is Rikers Island. Prison is up north, the mountains. They're right. going to prison. Right. And they're going Listen, to state. They're not going yeah, to feds. They're yeah, going to the state, which is way yeah, worse. Yeah, that's prison. There's yeah. a difference between jail and prison. Let's get that right. Rikers Island is a jail. Up top in the mountains is prison. Yeah. You're going to prison. Niggas eat, sleep, and shit violence when you wake up. Life is over, nigga. Nobody want to do that. A lot of motherfuckers rather be dead than do life. Put me in the ground. That's how niggas, I'd rather police put you in the ground than be in jail. Do you feel like that? Come on, bro. It's like you're, it's a whole nother world. If you were given life right now, would you, I'd rather would, you in, would you consider suicide? I'd rather be in the ground. I'm not saying I'm never think consider suicide, and I, I'm never saying uh, um, you people will never think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, just because I know I got friends, kids well, that you're, did you're suicide. You're Catholic also, so there's like a religious yeah, aspect of but it. But you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, people been depressed and, you know, sometimes things happen. But to do life in prison, you know how many people hang up in jail? Yeah, a lot. It happens every day. People hang up on the island. People hang up. You know, I'm hanging up. I'd rather not be here and not saying I'm promoting it than be in a cell for the rest of your life. Sometimes people could feel that. Some people feel like, fuck it, I'm not weak. Because they'll feel like, not me, but they'll feel like suicide is a sign of weakness and be like, yo, I'm going to do my bid. But who wants to do a life bid? Nobody. Because all them dudes is doing life is like, damn, they looking back like, damn, I wish I ain't do that. You're going to be in your cell 10 years later? Damn, nobody going to remember you? No packages? Because out of sight, out of mind. If you got a bid and you doing five years, yeah, you're going to get packages. You're going to get letters. Ten years, eight years, you it slows down maybe towards the ne- end of the five. Mm-hmm. Trust me, I have friends that did ten years. The first five years, you're gonna send them packages, letters. The next five years, it might slow down. You're gonna send them packages and letters. But if you got life, that shit is stopping. People, your family gonna die. Your, fi- your cousins, friends, people gonna you gonna hear other people getting locked up with you. Time is gonna fly. You're gonna be out of sight, out of mind. That's just how prison is. Yeah. If you're going a long enough time, people are just going to forget about you, bro. Yeah. Unless they really, really, really love you. And shout out to those people because they'll hold it down. Yeah. I mean, shout out to, I just interviewed a Tony Lewis Sr. He mm-hmm. was one of the drug kingpins uh, from D.C. Shout out to him. He just got out yeah. after 34 years. Damn. Like a couple of weeks ago, we did his first interview. But his son, Tony Lewis Jr., was fighting for him, fighting for him, fighting for him, doing shit. Yeah, you know, that's, starting and programs. And, 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 and he, and he had a family love. to come home to, grandkids yeah. and so forth. But he's lucky. Yeah. He's the exception to the rule. Yeah, he's the exception. And, 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 for, and for Tony Lewis Jr., his son probably kept his mind right because a lot of people can't do 34 years and not tell on nobody. A lot of people can't do 34 years and come back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, his, his not his co-defendant, but the guy that was arrested at the same time as him was uh, Rayful Edmonds. Oh, yeah. Ray- who told okay. on everyone. Oh, yeah. He told, he gave up like 30 bodies. And he's still in jail. <laughs> right. In well, prison, Rafe, that is. Well, Rafe Edmond was the killer killer nigga, right? No? I'm not sure exactly. Oh, he was calling the shots. He was. I think he was calling the shots. I'm not sure. But what had happened was when Rafe got uh, arrested and he was in jail, he continued to drug deal. So he got another 30 years while he was in prison. Like he was actually selling more drugs in prison than out of prison. So he got I another mean, 30 years. He had him telling on everybody and he's still he's still You know still how much money up. was in D.C. back then? <laughs> It's crazy. You're talking about the 80s. So and, and the late you know, 80s? Dudes that did 80s numbers. Shout out to my man True. My man True did about 30. But he came back and he he kind of was smart. You know, sometimes people could lose their mind in there because oh, yeah. prison is another world. The world we're living in, prison is a whole nother world. Yeah. Just always remember that. It's a whole nother world. Did you ever see um huh? did you ever see the, the Savage Life interview I did with Rico Reckless? Oh, Rico? Nah, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, you, didn't, you didn't hear about this? Mm-mm. He gave this, he gave this, him and Ewald Samo mm-hmm. gave this description yeah, of what happens yeah. in, in uh, Cook County Jail in, um, uh, in Chicago. This was such an interesting interview 
that uh, Joe Rogan actually played it on a show. So he said, in Cook County Jail, what they would do is they would knock you out, pull your pants down, spread your ass open and spit in your ass. Oh, pause. What? Savage what, what Savage like? Well, I don't know where this gay shit started from, but this was going on. In Chicago, Cook County Jail, they will knock you the fuck out. Cold. Knock when you, you, out when cold. you hit that ground, you would hit this. Get, get that, that butt! <laughs> Motherfucker, get that. Nah, the nigga that's fighting to be, get the butt. <laughs> Motherfucker gone. Pull your pants down. Pull your drawers down. Open up your ass it's and spin it. your ass. And now your ass a bitch. Six up people line up It'd to be come niggas spin your ass. Spin, niggas are spinning your ass. A but why would somebody want to do that anyway? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no fucking idea why so someone would want to do this. I don't even <laughs> but apparently this actually happens in the jails in Chicago. Nah, man, that's crazy, bro. That's yeah. crazy. Well, China Mac did a whole description about, I guess, in, in jail, your ass is called your trunk. And, you know, dude, dude, dudes would hide drugs in the ass. And yeah, everybody boof raises everything. Right, exactly, right? boofing, yeah. right? But he said that he's personally seen, so like word will get out, oh, so-and-so got some cocaine in the ass, whatever. They would knock that dude out, reach in the ass, pull out the drugs. That is different, though. And then That's go take that. Seen, so what they'll do is, like, if you know, if, if, if motherfucker know that somebody coming through with the bag, he got the bag on him, he'll get knocked out, somebody will knock him out, boom! And then <laughs> put the glove on, right? And you go up in that ad. You go up in that trunk, boy. Go up in the trunk and and grab out whatever the fuck was in there. I seen that shit. I seen that. That's a robbery. And then they go that's do a, it. That's a jailhouse robbery. You know what I mean? But you said spitting and all that other shit. That shit. Oh, shit. you think one is okay and one isn't? No, I'm just saying. You, <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's okay. They're both equally I'm disgusting. I'm not saying no, it's okay. But what I'm saying is a whole nother world. So knock a nigga out, take his work. You know what I'm saying? But you got to reach in his ass to get it. You think police, I seen police reaching people ass on the block. Put the gloves on. Right. Oh, he, we all know you keep it in your ass. Yeah, no, no thanks. I, I mean, that shit you. People call me the police, but I, I see. <laughs> listen, I was, I, in, listen do. I was in the streets when David Dinkins, when we had David Dinkins and right. we were selling drugs, we was like, yay. Rudy Giuliani came. We was like, oh. <laughs> I was in that era going mm -hmm. from Dinkins to Rudy Giuliani. And that's when police was putting gloves on. Oh, pull your pants down. We got it in his ass. We got it. You saw a police officer put gloves yes, on and reach his Put gloves his on ass. on the block. He got it in his ass. I wonder at what point do you realize that's what I'm that saying. Maybe this is not a job you want to do. I mean, like at what point I mean, do you listen, say maybe joining the NYPD wasn't the best example? Yeah, listen, as you got shit all over you know, your listen, glove and you're reaching what, in this, the band's ass. This is what ass. I'm saying to you. <laughs> to us, to us, it was a game back in the days. We was crazy kids. We used to you'd be on a block. Right. Police be up there. We'll still be hustling. Right. Beat walkers. But when the, when the, when the task force come out, Tuesdays and Thursday, mm -hmm. we that's the time to go. You don't see nobody outside. That's who you don't fuck with. But the blue and whites, we we didn't have no respect except for a couple of dudes that was on the mountain bikes that didn't play. They was bullies. They you know beat you up. That's what I'm saying. Police harassment. That was early for me. We was 15, 16. Get roughed up, slapped in the head. Get off the block, fighting police. Um, police digging in dudes, you know, putting the gloves on. So I seen police harassment as a youth. Okay. I was young seeing that on the block. It was nothing. Can you but if imagine? I had something on me, I was smart. <laughs> right. I always said, when they say, get the fuck out of here. That's why, like, some people, I'd be like, yo, why are you arguing with the police if you got something on you? Can you imagine having dinner with your wife after a long day at work? Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, how's work today? Well, I had to reach up in some dude's ass. Pass the bread rolls. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, listen, pause, but uh, it's it's a part of it was a part of the game back then. They knew you think the police didn't know about that? Like, so that wasn't only in jail, that was like in the streets. No, I got you. No, oh, I understand that people hide work the in their ass. I, yeah. I get it, but but the, the fact of putting a glove on, and that's that's your job. That's your job that day. I, I just can't imagine doing a job like that. Imagine all day hustling and you got a booth. Like, it's just a part of the game. Yeah. Putting something in your own ass is a little different than reaching up into someone else's yeah, ass. I mean, well, I, I'm just saying. I've seen police do it, man. They put I'm the just gloves saying. on. Pull up.
Cold Dudes Down. Well, you know, you know what's what? interesting? Uh, this interview's not out yet, but I interviewed uh, Lance on Rivera. Oh, okay. And he had an interesting take on what was happening. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, from his point of view, and you know, Lance was a, was a hustler. He was a Biggie's manager. Well, yeah, yeah, Biggie's yeah. business partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Definitely. So, but he was a big hustler out in Brooklyn, everything else like that. Uh -huh. From his point of view, what he said, which was really, really interesting, mm -hmm. he said that after Edward Byrne got killed in 1988 in, in Queens, remember the whole, like, yeah, the, the rookie shot. cop, the rookie cop that got shot? Yeah, cop killed Queens. <laughs> Over the next few That's years, what they was it and, and remember, uh, George H.W. Bush used that incident to become president. He actually had Edward Burns' badge yeah, that's while why, he was running for why, president, and he would pull it out at rallies. Yeah, and said, I, when I become president, I'm going to be tough on drug dealers. Yeah, right? cop shot was cop shot was the first undercover cop, I believe, in the 80s to get killed. Mm. So that's why they called it Cop Killer Queens back then. Yeah. By, you know, you in the book with Fat Cat and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. But, um, yeah, that changed the game. That's when that, Task that, Force came. Exactly. Yeah, that changed the game. That yeah. changed the game. And mm -hmm. over the next few years, once Bush became president, he came down so hard on all the drug dealers around right. the country right. that from Lance's point of view, that's when the drug dealers started to enter the hip hop game. These new SBI, federal task force started coming down on the out of New York drug dealers. They giving them a lot of time, setting people up, lying, the, uh, the natives, making up stories about New York drug dealers, giving them all kinds of homicides that they committed. And so now New York drug dealers are saying, hold up, we need to be able to take our money now and move into something more legitimate. And at that time, what was more legitimate than the music business? When you look at some of the prominent people, the Harry O's and everything else like that, it was getting so hot for them to do what they're doing that they're like, oh, we'll do the natural transition. I mean, the rappers are talking about the drug dealers anyway. So this is, no, makes I, it kind of easy Shout to Harry O. Yeah, I believe you. Shout out to Harry O. You know, I went to his mansion before, was chilling with him and all that. After you got out? Dude. Yeah, like like probably last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I spoke yeah, my to him man, on the phone. My man, L.A. Buck, took me to his mansion, and I'm, he's a solid dude, man. Yeah. You know, I got a chance to chop it with him. Big mansion. We was just... Just chilling, you know what I mean? <laughs> Word. Mm -hmm. Chopping it up with him and shit. You got Death Row definitely got a lot of stuff coming, snooping them, shout to snooping. Yep. The whole Death Row and Harry over there. As well as um what AZ in them group was back in the days. That oh, is true. Um, mob style? Mob style, that was my yeah. shit. I interviewed AZ, I interviewed yeah. uh Pat Porter, which is Rich Porter's uh oh, sister. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Rich for rest in peace, Rich Porter, man. Well, speaking of getting uh arrested, Trump. Just got indicted on 34 felonies right here in New York City. Definitely. I heard traffic was crazy that day. That's yeah, why I didn't that's wanna, what I heard. I don't want to come to the city mm -hmm. on that Tuesday. Were you surprised? Um, yes and no. Because, I mean, it's not like he got a mugshot or they said he wasn't even fingerprinted. He wasn't so, handcuffed. So is it really charges or not? Or is it, I don't know. It, it's like yes or no. You never know what to expect from Trump. But you met Trump before. Yeah, I met Trump when I first got out of jail. He came to drug dealer Wednesdays <laughs> with me and Okay before he was the president. Right. Seemed like a nice guy at that time, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I guess once you get into politics, you know, you know yeah. how that goes. <laughs> I guess politics will change you, huh? Well, he didn't get a mugshot because the rationale was everybody knows what Trump looks like. But they so still a mugshot got the, is not necessary. They still from got the mugshot t-shirts that his, his guys were selling. Well, that, it wasn't a real mugshot. It but was, I'm just it, saying, it was, they fake, had the, it was a fake mugshot. But they had the mugshot shirts. Yeah. Now, him not getting handcuffed, I had a problem with. Because from what I understand, his, you know, because he has Secret Service, from what I was told, Secret Service told them that they're not going to allow him to be handcuffed. Which to me is weird, because Secret Service doesn't have authority over NYPD. But it's the Secret Service, though. Shit. If NY, I was NYPD, listen, I, I, I would handcuff Secret Service if this, they try to stop me from handcuffing. I, I don't think you got the balls to do that, man. <laughs> nah, man. You ain't, now you really let your nuts hang. If you NYPD and you handcuff Secret Service, what's going to happen? I don't know. Just, what's going to happen? I would just think Secret Service has a higher rank than, than a police officer. No. How many of them are there? How many NYPDs or <laughs> officers were in that vicinity? But he, but, How many Secret Service agents? You said were there? Secret Service said they're not going to handcuff, and that, it happened, and, right? And, and it ultimately, and they're going to listen, and that's Trump, because some of them police officers love Trump. Most of the police department love Trump. Unfortunately, Probably, maybe some of them hate him. Yeah, 
it's a 50-50 thing. Some people love Trump, some mm. people hate him. But you're well, going to always talk about him. Yeah, I mean, listen, but he huh? got charged with 34 felonies. Obviously, he pled not guilty. Mm -hmm. Do you think Trump is going to prison? Nah. You don't think so? Nah. I think Trump is going to pay a hell of fines or something. I don't think he's going to prison. You think he's going to get like a probation or something? Yeah. Because cause how would America look if one of our presidents went to jail? It happens in other countries all the time. But I'm just saying, how would the history... Happened in Japan not too long all ago. All I'm saying is, how would the history of America be... You know what I mean? It, it wouldn't make sense. He'll I pay mean, a hell of fines and... and I think it would look he'll perfectly still be able to okay, Because you got to think, it, in people's eyes that are Trump fans, mm -hmm. they look at it like, yo, this is a plot to stop him from running. That's all I hear. Yeah. Because you know I stay out of politics. Some of mm -hmm. my friends love Trump. You know, and mm -hmm. like I met Trump, he was a good guy when I met him. Mm -hmm. I don't got nothing against the guy, but he might say some crazy things sometimes. But hey, I stay out of politics, right? But at the end of the day, Vlad, you hear me? Mm -hmm. If he runs again, do he has a good chance to win? I think so. I think a lot of people would pick Trump over Biden. You're quiet on that one. I mean... I'm not totally thrilled with Biden. I think a lot of people voted for Biden because they didn't like Trump. No, I'm I hoping think, maybe I Kamala think, Harris runs. Huh? I'm hoping Kamala Harris becomes the new president. Yeah, I mean, Personally, that's, that's why I think a lot of people voted was really for her, for her being the first, you know, black woman being vice president. But her, more votes came for her than really for Biden. Possibly. It was really more about her. Let's just keep it real. Possibly. Well, I mean, it was also people loved Obama. And this was Obama's vice president. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot. There's a lot a woman, going on. To see, listen, the first woman vice president, black, is an amazing thing. Bro. Right. You know, you never think you'll be alive to see something like that. Like, well, well, let me ask you a question. If Trump actually does get found guilty and uh, he goes to jail and he ends up in Rikers, what what advice would you give to Donald Trump to survive in Rikers? He's going to be in PC. He'll be good. <laughs> He's going to be in protective custody. He's going to be in filet mignon. young. They're going to take care of him. He's not going to have to join the gangs. You know what he's I mean? Not like to, that. Yeah, he ain't going to have to be blood. He's not going to, no, to get tatted up. He's going to be good. They're going to have him in some medium. They're going to have him in a special jail. Right. If that was the choice. Well, I don't think so. It's going to happen. But if it would happen, come on, he's going to be in a special jail, bro. Okay. And he's going to do what? Six months? What, what are they going to hit him with? Yeah, I'm not sure. He's not going to do no years. Come on, bro. Yeah, I mean, look. Now, Trump, that's not white privilege. That's rich privilege. That's rich privilege? <laughs> rich or presidential privilege? privilege? Yeah, presidential <laughs> rich privilege. <laughs> Secret <laughs> Service, you're not cuffing them. John Moran. Mm -hmm. After getting into it with like a 17-year-old kid and allegedly pulling out a gun on him and whatever, he ended up beating that whole situation only a couple of weeks later to pull out a gun on social media in the club. This guy's worth, his deals are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He had his own Nike sneaker and so forth. We all make mistakes. He's cool. He's good. He just hurt his hand yesterday. Yeah. I feel bad. That's one of my favorite players in the world. Okay, so John's one of your favorite players. Of course. Okay. He's when you saw him, team. okay, as someone who's gotten caught up with guns in the past when you were younger and everything else like that, when you saw someone, I would say to someone, well, no, but you never really did dumb shit once you know, you never pulled out guns. Well, hold on a second. We did. Wait, guns wait, no, wait, no. Stupid. I remember being in G unit offices, and I remember. I think, I think you pulled out a gun on camera when I was filming. Maybe you. so. Yeah. Possibly. You're yeah, definitely we, wearing bulletproof vests. And everybody, everything else like that. listen. Everybody makes mistakes. When we're young, you know, guys get millions of dollars. He's a star. He mm -hmm. made up for mistakes. Look at it. Now he's in the playoffs. He made for his mistakes. It's just a simple mistake. He realized he's a role model. He, you know, did what he had to do. You know, um, he realized he made a big mistake. And, you know, for somebody who's a high a icon in basketball right now mm -hmm. to pull out the gun. Yeah, you know, he made a mistake. It was a big mistake and he paid for it. You know, he, yeah, got, he got suspended, suspended for eight games, I think. Lost a bunch of money, probably lost a bunch of endorsements nah, in the process. He still, he still have a lot of endorsements. Nike gave him a break, but he's still with Nike, yeah. I think. I think so, yeah. sneaker is pretty no, I dope. think it was like a Powerade. He had lost yeah, a Powerade, Powerade commercial and or something like that. Hopefully he'll get it back. You know, it was just a mistake. People make, think about it. We're talking about people like, how old's Morant? 24, 23, yeah. 20. Let me see. How old is John Moran? He's 22 years old, man. Age he is. 23. 23 years old. 23. You know? Yeah, I mean. Still young, you know, and I know what you mean. I understand being a role model mm -hmm. and, you know, nobody asks to be a role model. Sometimes well, I don't think it's really being a, a role model. It's like you're not a rapper 
or a, a, an entrepreneur, you're part of the NBA. You're under this umbrella that has very specific but, rules and hey, regulations. I understand, but that doesn't make him not. They, I, I done met more black ball, ball players that are, uh, that sh are street niggas. Steve Jack, like they was real. Allen Iverson, these, mm -hmm. these are real street niggas. So, well, he ain't really from the streets. He from the streets. He from the streets. Everybody from the streets. Sometimes we just make mistakes, but then you realize he made his mistake. He paid for it, got fined crazy, games. He realized, yo, listen, I'm a role model. It's bigger than that. But he's yeah. young, man. He's 23. Like, when I heard about it, the first thing I thought was our last interview when you said, a gun is not a toy. I don't put a dress on it. I don't play around with it. I don't flash it. I don't show it off. It's a gun. It's there for a very specific reason, how which is stories, to kill someone yeah, how many in, in self-defense. How many stories have you heard of people playing with guns and somebody get hurt? Lots of stories. Lots of stories. I've heard lots. Of, for me, coming up to a teenager now, like lots of stories. Done seen people with guns playing with it on their waist, going off. Gun shot on the floor by accident. Cheddar Bob. Yeah. Uh, Lil Wayne shot himself in the chest on accident, this right? This is what I'm saying. Yeah. So a gun is nothing to play with. It gets no. you in big trouble. And if you got I've never, yeah, look, I've never understood that. Like, I've never, I have guns in my house. I've never had them out when people came over. Yeah. I've never, if someone, like, if, if I was in studios, or I've, I've been in studios where people had their guns out. Mm -hmm. I would never even touch those guns. Oh, no, I'm not touching God forbid guy. my fingerprints show up on this DNA shit. On, <laughs> yeah. Come on, that's rule That's what I'm one. saying. I wouldn't even you get close you know, to it. If somebody got some guns out, you sit there and touch it, your DNA is all over that's that. It. You, are you nuts? Yeah. Wait, that's yeah. rule number one. That's what you I'm know, saying. I don't play with people guns, and I don't play with guns at all. It's not yeah. nothing to you know, glorify. And like I said, if I got to go somewhere where I have to bring a gun, mm -hmm. I prefer not to go because I'm not licensed to carry. So that's a, I'm a felon. Yeah. You know, I would tell all the all the young kids out there that don't have felonies, you know, you can you can get your concealed weapon now, you know, do it legally, mm -hmm. do it the right way. You know, cuz I feel like New York is going to turn into a self-defense state with the conceal and carry now. Mm -hmm. So do it the right way. Yeah. I tell my son, I tell everybody, yo, listen, go get your concealed license and you know, do it the right way and don't think just cuz you got it cuz I've done seen guys that have a gun license and they blow it. You know, a dude sneeze, hit you, and they pulling out their gun. I done seen that, you know, being in the Gianna entourage, dudes had a license and they lose it right away because they feel like Dirty Harry with the, with the, with the yeah. revolver, you know what I mean? So a gun is not something to make you tougher or a gun is not nothing to play with. But I mean, you know, I suggest people just get licensed and do it the right way. Because if me, I wish I would have never had a felony. I would go get licensed and I would actually Cause it's a professional way. When you go to the range, these guys are professional. They're showing you how to really handle a firearm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you dudes on the block shooting like this. Yeah, sideways. And, yeah. and this is why innocent people are getting hit and stupid stuff is happening. And it's really just protection for your life. It's not, a gun is not made for you to go out there and start trouble. Well, and I think that most times carrying a gun, legal or otherwise, is usually a bad idea. But, I understand and, that there could be a situation where you could protect your life, but I think more often than not, yeah, because they say like, guns, like you talked about how you yeah. know people think they're dirty hairy. It's like yeah. a lot of times, as a man, there is a situation where you would walk away from if you didn't have a gun. That you that if you had a gun, you're gonna not walk away from it because you're like, I got a gun, and then things escalate. Next thing you know, to me, that's the comfortability of um, like being in um, overseas. Like, it's totally different. There's Nobody like, got gun. Yeah, like the firearms, like I told you, I think in Sweden, the police leave their firearms in the precinct. And um, there's, there's firearms there, but it's like rare. Mm -hmm. You know, in London, you know, dudes are getting stabbed. A couple of dudes might have firearms. Yeah. Canada, they got firearms there. I've seen a lot when I went up there. But it's not as worse as New York. To me, New York, you got the ghost guns out there. You know, mm -hmm. dudes are 3D printing them. You, you, you got guns coming from all over the place. Like... Who do we blame? Do we blame the streets or do we blame the manufacturers or the people with the ideas? Because now you got ghost guns where you can make your own gun. Yeah. Where dudes are buying a part. And of course, the feds will eventually get you because once you buy the part, you see it a million times, dudes making the ghost guns. Mm -hmm. They let the feds let them get away with it. Order a million parts. Go ahead. We'll be at your house later. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it usually works. But by that time, 15 guns are on the street. 
Yeah. How are we going to trace, how are you going to trace those guns? What do you think about the guns that just got released that have like fingerprint sensors? That's the smartest and, and, and thing. Like face recognition and stuff me, like that. To me, that's the smartest thing ever. Yeah. Because you got to think now, I just seen a kid online, his father was reckless, had the gun in the couch and a little, little baby, yeah. five years old, grabbed the gun, pow, right. let it off. So stuff like that, or the kid that goes, shoots the teacher, what is it, six years old? Yeah. Shit is ridiculous, man. Right. Come but, on. But you know what's interesting, though? Shit, no, no, no. Really think about it. Think, okay. Vlad, really think about it. No, no, six it's years up. old? No, it's when, crazy. When you were six years old, what you was thinking about? Not guns. I was thinking about fucking um, Incredible Hulk and yeah. G.I. Joe, maybe. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking about, but it definitely wasn't no no gun. Listen, I, I saw an interview with a guy. He, had, he owned a gun store. Mm -hmm. And he started to carry the guns with the fingerprint sensors. And he said that he almost had to shut his store down because all the gun rights people started to protest the store and tell and, and get the word out not to shop there. Because right. people who are like real heavy NRA guys, they don't want anything like that. Because their argument is like, well, what if the fingerprint sensor doesn't work when you, when you need it the most? Right, we don't want any sort of limitations on our guns. We want to have AK forty seven. We want that bitch to jam. Or that's what I'm saying. No, but I'm saying. but basically, he had to essentially stop carrying those guns because no one was shopping at a store because he was carrying them. So it, it's a very weird thing no, when it comes I, to gun rights. I understand because you got gun enthusiasts. You know, man. Shout to my guy Black Rambo. I always watch his page, and you know, he always he's <laughs> yeah. buying a million guns and he's doing it the right way and showing you how to shoot and stuff like that. And it's nothing. It's one of our amendments to bear arms. Mm -hmm. It's just when you got these idiots that are uh, shooting up schools and uh, and these, some of these guys are first time gun buyers. It's like, how do you see the signs that somebody has a problem mentally and is going to do something crazy with this gun? That's the whole thing. Because there's a lot of, you know, I'm not I'm not against bearing arms. Of course, no, me, not me that. neither. I'm not against that. I own guns. Multiple yeah, that's guns. what I'm saying. So yeah. my whole thing is. When uh this what's this this girl that uh shot up the uh um she shot up the school. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was a, the trans girl? Yeah, the trans trans same sexual girl, excuse me. Transgender. And, transgender, excuse me. And um, because I don't want no beef with nobody. Nobody. I'm good. So um you gotta watch what you say. Um that was terrible. Little kids, man. Yeah. Like, what is the world coming to? That's how I do. I watch the news and watch shit online. I'll be like, what the fuck is the world coming to? And yeah. that person just purchased a gun. So, look, I'm a felon, right? I can't go buy a gun, but I have my, I'm in the right state of mind. I don't have anything mentally wrong with me where I would shoot up anything, you know? Why well, I can't get a gun? But you mean to tell me this person that's mentally unstable is not getting... People need to get reevaluated before they go get their gun, bro. You need to go sit down with a therapist, and I think felons should be allowed to have a gun because if you change your life, why I can't have a gun on me if I change my life? The things I did yeah. in my younger ages, why I can't get a license? I agree. I think that should change because you'll give a, a, a gun seller, purchase sell a gun to somebody that's not in their right state of mind, and you wouldn't even know because it's just a questionnaire for them. Did you hear about the whole Mikey Williams situation? No. <laughs> Mikey that. Williams was a top basketball draft pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I heard Memphis. about that. And he got caught with the gun. Five counts of assault with a deadly weapon uh, using a firearm. I mean, I, you know, to me, it's the company you keep. You know, so if you're around dudes, you know, you know, um, like, that's why, like I always said, and I don't like to always bring up 50, and, but when he used to always say, yo, stop selling drugs because we're about to take it to another level, I'm looking at him like he was crazy, but mm -hmm. I understand what he was saying. So if you're playing basketball and you're the top prospect, if your circle is not telling you, yo, stay out of trouble, because usually that's what dudes do on the block. If we knew somebody was a top prospect in our hood, yo, stay out of trouble, get off the block. You know, but sometimes the streets entice you. You could play ball, but that dude was probably obviously a street nigga, but we're going to look at him like he crazy because he got a chance to get out the hood. But if you ain't got nobody in your circle telling you, yo, bro, nah, what the fuck are you even doing with a gun? Then you with the wrong circle, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you with the wrong circle. Because if you go to jail, you're definitely not going to make it. You ain't going to be the top prospect no more. Somebody else is. So my whole thing is like, if nobody's in your circle telling you, yo, bro, you moving crazy. Why you got this gun? Because there's plenty of people that would love to be in your opportunity. Just like if you look at a rapper, like, yo, he just threw his life away. Or, 
or an entrepreneur, or anybody, or me or you, Vlad, Vlad just threw his life away, his thing. they're going to look at you stupid. People, we glorify all the negative shit, right? But when you go to jail, they're going to be like, damn, he's, he's a stupid nigga. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh, we do. The, the negative shit get more right. pressed than anything, right? Look, I but mean. But when a motherfucker go to jail, they're going to be like, damn, that nigga stupid. That nigga dumb. He blew man millions. Why he do that? But we laugh and we glorify the shit. Oh, shoot. Da, da, da. We glory. We laugh. We laugh. We love it. Every That's how media. That's why I don't. Listen, I have no emotions with this shit. I'm fearless with this industry shit now. I don't give a fuck because I've been through the ringer. Mm -hmm. You know, so my whole thing is. Like, we laugh at the fucked up shit. I got more press from shootouts and assaults than me doing charity events. Mm. That's just how the fuck it is. Yeah. And then when you're in jail, motherfucker's still laughing at you. Mm -hmm. oh, that nigga's dumb. He dropped the ball. He had everything. So for him, Mikey, yeah. that's how motherfuckers are going to look at him. Some people, gonna, they're going to look at him. Yo, he's stupid. He's number one prospect. He can make it to the league. He out here being dumb. But it's all about the circle, the company you keep. You are... The company you keep. That's why I like hanging with 50 Cent and I like hanging with fucking Vlad and I like hanging with rest in peace like the Chris Lighties and all these execs that I learned and got I learned the business from. You know, when I'm around, did the Breakfast Club, talking to Charlemagne, I'm like a sponge. I want to get the information. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of money out here and there's a lot of things that you can learn out here to build your own business and your own empire as well as you did it, 16 years in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You on that list? Four billion, four billion, what, what you did? Four billion last year? Numbers? Number wise? Views? I seen yeah. that list. Some, four something billion? like that. Yeah, it was something like, like that. Four billion or something yeah. like that. So at the end of the day, bro, you built your empire and that's your brain and you're self made. You know? Mm -hmm. Forget all the violence and all the dumb shit, man. Let's go on trips, fly the world to all the youth. Like, that's why I wanna do Passport to the Future where I, I take kids from the inner cities. I don't care if they, you know, they could be overseas, Africa. You take them that never seen nothing and I'll bring them to Vlad and they could pick your brain mm -hmm. and they could work on how they're going to be, be be YouTube moguls yeah. or music moguls or TikTok moguls or like the Kid Kai Twitch moguls or academics, a mogul like academics or a Joe Buttons on number one on the list. People want to learn these things as well as me, but kids too, because that's the next generation to push the future. And hopefully it get them off the street, not fucking with guns because they making money off of YouTube mm -hmm. or, or doing this or doing that. Because motherfuckers is getting YouTube off of exposing snitches and shit like that. Right. There's all kinds of lanes for YouTube. They got cooking channels on YouTube. Now TikTok... What I'm finding out is TikTok is one of the biggest places where people shop now. People tell you to buy this mop. You know what? Your girl will go buy this mop. Hmm. Yo, bitch, this mop right here is this. <laughs> well, you buy this air fryer, people will go on TikTok and 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 like I've bought shit off of TikTok. Just hmm. seeing, oh shit, this this shit right here is it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we were talking about sports. Uh E40 just got kicked out of the Kings game. Did you see that? I mean, shout to E40, you're a legend, but that, that's my man. Like what do you, what, I was shocked. What do you expect? He wasn't at Golden State Stadium. He was away. No, he was in Sacramento. So that's how I looked at that. Yeah. I'm like, he's arguing with Sacramento fans. Of course, they ganged up on him. You know, they said it was a white lady. So, but I ain't gonna lady, get yeah. into the racial thing yeah, again. It was a Karen thing. But you yeah. got to think. To me, it was just a forget the race thing when it comes to sports. People go crazy over sports anyway. Mm. I don't give a fuck what color you are, right? But think about it. He's not. Home. He's not at Golden State. Shout right. to E40. He's a no, legend. He, I love he, him. He's up a little north. Yeah. He's in Sacramento. You know, we all know him for being at home games. Right. Yeah. And he has, like, like I remember I talked to 40, like, a few mm -hmm. months ago. Shout to E40. He, yeah. he has, like, lifetime, like, floor seats. For Golden State. For Golden course. State. Come on, he's the like, legend. Like, the amount of money he listen, spent on it was crazy. He's, listen, like, a hardcore we Golden already know. State I learned dude. this early, early in my career. I learned about California because we was back and forth. And shout to E40. He's, like... A super icon, yeah. legend of the Bay. Right. If they had a face of the Bay, you know him, him um, too Matt short. Dre, yeah, Matt too Dre. short. Yep. Like I know my hip hop. Like dude, dude, there would be the Bay would be theirs, and as well as more artists. But I know Mac Dre, E Forty, Too Short, and a couple of more artists. Yeah. Right. Well, there's more, way more. But he's such an icon that it's gonna make big news. Yeah. And then, and quite sure, 
Them people in um in Sacramento knew who he was. Fifty was at the game too. Oh, he was there. Fifty was there on okay. the floor. You know, he got a shim. He got his liquor there. Okay. In Sacramento Stadium. Shout out to him. Yeah. The Branson and the Lashem. And my man El Dorado was there. So I was I'm watching the game. I see them. I see E40. But you know, 50s, I guess he's on Sacramento side, you know, because he, <laughs> he got tills well, with the Well, but he doesn't have a, a real connection to either team, like 50. You know what I mean? 50. Oh, no, no. He has 50's no. 50 just business nah, for him. No, no, no. Like, like E40 really is a Golden State yeah, like, like 50 supporter. Is, 50's really putting the Lashem and Branson to a next level because yeah. it's in Houston, um, Rocket yeah, Stadium. He's, he's hitting different it's, markets yeah. with it. The yeah. Astros game, 400,000 exactly. worth of champagne. Exactly. Um, I believe he's in. A couple of more arenas, but the Sacramento Kings mm -hmm. and I think Minnesota, I think, I think so, so yeah. too. Yeah, so, you yeah, know, yeah. 50's a genius. He's getting his liquor everywhere. You can shout to him. It's like, you know, we'll go to the Waldorf and you can find this liquor. So it's like high, high class, upper chant, upper chantelant, whatever they call it, type of things. But um, he was at the game and E-40, I looked at it like, yo, bro, he wasn't home. You know, it's like, it seemed like all the Minnesota fans just, you know, Sacramento fans, I mean, just got up on him. Shit, I'd be tight. And I'm, as and much I'm quite as those sure. tickets cost to be kicked out of the game well, well, after look, look, spending look, that I'm, kind of I'm money. I'm quite sure everybody know he was a Golden State Warrior fan. <laughs> and they knows. lost yesterday, I think. That'd yeah, they so. did. Curry yeah. missed the last three-pointer. Yeah. I watched back playoffs all day yesterday. Thank God yeah. for my playoffs. Shout out to E-40, man. That's the homie. Shout out to E-40, man. I've been known him forever. I've done multiple interviews with him. We talk, actually. We keep in contact. Shout he's a cool dude, man. And, and it's not, and he's not like... He's not a rah rah type dude. Nah, come on. You know what I mean? He's not out there pushing the line, insulting people, nah, throwing drinks just, on no, people. Like nah, he's not he's like not that. that. He's like but fifty something tell, years old. But you could tell you from what I've seen, it feel like the whole stadium ganged up against him. Like bye, Probably. like they was trying to agitate him. Yeah, you know, and like you said, plenty of money for floor seats. I would have been pissed too. <laughs> yeah, but E forty wasn't home when he's home. Right, when he's in that Golden he State, he never gotten kicked yeah, out of a come Golden on. State. He, he yeah. gets, he gets treatment everywhere around the world good, but right. I guess, you know, it's the playoffs and things got a little intense, man. But shout out to E-40, man. Right. Wasn't, I mean, because you, you, you talked about the, the Timberwolves. Wasn't there like a back and forth between Ja Rule and 50 Cent over like the whole Timberwolves? Yeah, 50 said, I think they was cursed or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. If Ja Rule came forward and publicly said, listen, I want to apologize to 50 Cent and G-Unit over X, Y, and Z. I was young. You know what I mean? We were all wild. I want to, you Vlad, know, we all have fuck, kids Vlad, now. I want to put Vlad, it behind us. I'm just going to take it back to the first. Shut the fuck up with that shit. We're going to take it back to the first. Shut the fuck up with that shit, Vlad. Please. Man. Okay, fine. I tried. I tried. I tried. Did 50 propose to his girlfriend? Listen, I don't want to ask too much 50 questions. You're okay. you going to get mad at you. <laughs> well, but it's out there. It's how she's like flashing a I'm, ring. I'm like, not sure. I know not it, was sure. A, it was a big rock. Shout to Cuban. You know what I mean? Okay. Big rock on a thing. I'm not sure, bro. There, there, there we go. There we go. Boosie and T.I. seemingly squashed their beef. At the airport. No, At the airport. Went, but but, but uh, from what I understand, they had spoken before already. Yeah, definitely. It just went viral in the airport. That's good. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, when you look at that situation... and, and I know, for example... But this is the question. Is the album still dropping? I don't know. I, I haven't spoken to, to Boosie since, since since that whole situation. That's the question. But I, I remember when that first happened, and, and I interviewed Boosie. Right. And listen, you got to understand, me and Boosie, like, we don't really talk and socialize between our interviews. You know, every so often we'll hit each other, but really we try to save up everything for when the interview hits. Man, I, yo, listen, let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Boosie is one of the reasons why I like to do Vlad all the time. Because Boosie is is one entertaining, funny motherfucker. He says yeah. what he wants to say. He do what he want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's a hustling motherfucker. Like I said, I remember seeing him first time performing in Bucktown, Tennessee. And when he came out, you know, G-Unit, we was, we, we was big at the time. But when he came out, I'm like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? Mm. And that was years ago. That might have been 04, 03. And Boosie is like, come on, bro. He's a legend. But what, one thing about him is he's going to say what he want to say and do what he want to do. Right. You know, and, and that's one thing I respect about Boosie, man. Right. And But I'm saying this to say this. Before the interview, I had no idea what Boosie was going to say about the T.I. situation. Because T.I. had done an interview. Well, he did his own podcast, like, from a previous year that started to go viral the weeks leading up to this yeah, Boosie the paperwork interview. Party and and he said, yeah. yeah, he basically said that, oh, 
there was a situation where my co- me and my cousin caught a gun charge and my yeah. cousin died and and I told all my cousin like, to get off. You telling him, and I was like telling right. him to go. So yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, matter. yeah. So when I brought it up to Boosie, I had no idea what Boosie was gonna say. I thought that maybe Boosie would give him a pass or he said, "No, nah, the album is still out. No, it's I still going on. Out, whatever." He flipped out. Yeah. But he flipped out. Okay, so is that album coming out? No. Oh. So you have a finished album with T.I. that's not coming out? No, because it ruined everything. Because of that? It ruined everything. I woke up with my motherfucking phone, everything full. Like, Boosie, you cannot do an album. Boosie, my real fans, like, Boosie, you the last one left. They like, you cannot put this album out. Like, you know, my uncle, OG nigga, called me. Like, Boosie? Like, nigga, hey. <laughs> nigga, what you gonna, hey, look. Nigga, that album ain't, my uncle called me. Nigga, that album ain't coming up. This became super viral. It went everywhere. T.I. responded and so forth. I remember one of the but you interviews. Gotta, you got, but you gotta remember this, Vlad. Boosie's a nigga that beat murder charges, right? Multiple murder charges. Multiple he murder was on charges. Death row. And a nigga was telling on him. Yes. So you gotta always remember you talking to a nigga that really went through it. Like a lot of rappers talk. Oh, that's that, but no, he really went through it. He had murder charges. He had a motherfucker telling on him mm-hmm. and he beat it. So, yeah. of course, he's going to take shit more personal because he was in prison, real prison. You know what I'm saying? And sh- like I said, them jails could be as worse as White Cause Island <laughs> down there in the South. You know, what's that jail? Magnolia? Magnolia? Yeah. What's the- Louisiana? I, I don't know where what, he was the, at. Yeah. Shit's in Louisiana, the jails in Atlanta. That shit could be as worse as White Cause Island. Absolutely. Now, what I'm saying to you is he gets a, he gets in his feelings about it because that motherfucker went through it. Of course. Somebody was telling on him for something he ain't do. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he's going to always get personal and feel tight about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We sat there and watched Boosie go to jail and watch him beat his cases in. Mm-hmm. Thank God, because he a legend. I fuck with Boosie. That's yeah. why. You know, I always fuck with Boosie. I tell you, I could send a New York nigga a record. I, I'll never get it back. I'll send Boosie a record. I get that shit back. I'll send Gucci a record. I get that shit back the next day. I'll send Yo Gotti a record. I get the shit back the next day. That's why I always shout out them niggas from the South. Bun B, same thing. Yeah, Bun P. That's one yep. thing I give about them niggas from the South. They always show love, and that's why they shit is so successful now. And I love they lane. Because like I said, I could call a New York rapper. I ain't going to say no names. Never get the record. Yeah. I call fucking Boosie. Got the record, yeah. Gucci, done. Yo Gotti, done. Waka Flocka, shit, done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I always shout out them niggas and respect them niggas from down there. You know? Well, I remember when they were kind of, you know, T.I. was upset and he was going back and forth. He had done an interview and he basically blamed me for what had happened. He goes, oh, the Vlad TV is a divisive platform and so forth. And I remember when Boosie spoke to him, like T.I. brought that up again. So he was blaming me for the situation as if I somehow manipulated Boosie into saying something and you so ever, forth. You ever heard that song? Everybody hates Vlad, hates Vlad. <laughs> like everybody hates Chris. It's cool, Vlad. That's why I like you. It's cool. It's all good. T.I., Boosie had made his mind up way before I asked the question. Mm-hmm. Let me say that. I did not pro- I did not tell him to say that. I didn't whatever. But if T.I., if you want to be mad at me, you can be mad at me. It's fine. I'm not tripping. But it's funny how when these things come up, everyone wants to point the finger at everyone except the person who's actually saying what they're right. saying. Everybody gets mad at you every once in a while. It's cool, man. But you're a <laughs> cool good. dude, man. You're a cool good. Thanks for having me. You know, make sure y'all get these Passport Gang shirts. Yeah. Got the... uh. Don't see me shirts coming to free AO shirts on passportboys.com. Mm-hmm. I got Sony Hall April 26th. That's coming up. Um, what, what else I got going on? I got another project dropping. The Loyal's out now. The, streaming, the streams are over 200,000. Nice. Thank you for everybody who got it. On um, my YouTube numbers, half a million over mm. for the for the um videos. Clown you when you down. Um, I think Banksy's at 200,000. Um, shout to Detroit. The uh, third video is, I think, almost at 100 crowds. And, um, we got Welcome to the Culture that's doing numbers. Please check that out on YouTube. Um, and check me back out on Vlad, man. Mm. We here. What episode is this? Five or six? Five or six. We here, man. Shout yeah. to Vlad. You know, that's my guy, man. I know everybody hates Vlad, but that's my <laughs> guy, man. That's my guy. But he got security. He got his own security. I have nothing to do with his beefs. 
He got his own security, suit and tie, and uh, mm. so, so after these messages, see you next interview. You know who didn't have security? Who? Takashi. Oh yeah, that was crazy. The the LA fitness situation. I mean, I just you know were you, were you surprised? Um, I wasn't surprised. I mean, you know, when when you talk on the internet, and you know, when you say a lot of crazy things, I think people just get upset. But I think I think Takashi was just really crazy. Like I met him before, I always thought he was like a little crazy. You think he's like off, he like just in real little, life? I think he's huh. just. Okay. I think he was crazy. Like he did a lot of crazy things, and you know, I don't like to talk about six nine. You know, but um, I was around. I was around Treyway and Crippy. Crippy came home. I heard something, something about an interview. You going to interview him? Yeah, he, he reached out to me. We're, we're talking. We'll see. We'll see if it happens. Yeah, Crippy came home. Should mm -hmm. make it yeah, happen. He, he shout, to, yeah. shout to Crippy. Crippy just came home off that five-year bid off that case. You know, and, and it was a wild Has it summer. been five years already? He did five years. Damn. That was fast. Yeah, he did five years. That's what's up. Well, yeah. I mean, what's interesting is that, well, three dudes jumped him. Two of them are actually father and son. Yeah, I've seen that online. I've yeah. seen that online. Yeah, like, well, I, I know somebody that knows them. They're like, oh, I don't think I mean, I mean, you know, and, and it's just crazy. Like, I mean, for me, I don't know. I wouldn't put that much energy in a 6 9 Like, I would just walk by him because it's like you're just going to go to jail. Right. Especially if you record it. It's yeah. almost like self-snitching. That's crazy. So, they jumped him and they recorded it themselves. Yeah. So if, if you if you beat him up. And they put it out. No, what I'm saying is if you would have beat him up, maybe, and if it wasn't online, then. You know, but for you to go to court, you know, and I'm not knocking them. They do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying for me, I would have walked by the nigga because you record it. You know you're going to jail. You're going to jail. Right. The stool was fucking with the feds. Yeah. So why would I want to do something to him? Yeah. I mean, I interviewed 600 Breezy. I mean, breezy. it's just common sense for me. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, you know I interviewed saying? 600 Breezy and when he got into it with, with uh, Takashi, like on IG Live or something, they ended up reporting him and he ended up getting hemmed up over that shit. He had me yelling at him on the phone, oh, you gonna die. You gonna, ah, oh, you gonna die. And Ooh. I got violated for that. So because of your, what, you guys were on FaceTime? or We was, was, on, it, we was on Instagram Live. On Instagram Live. Yeah. Because you had an argument with Takashi 6 9 and this was after he had already told on everybody. Yes. So, like over I just said, man, yo, listen, him, like, listen, you know what I mean? Like I said, I spoke to Lisa Everett, right? And she yep. said, she told me this. When an artist goes live and say they will have 50 people on there, 40 of them people is police. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of the biggest outlets that the police department have is Instagram, Facebook, and everything else, and Twitter, as well as everything else. We actually make the job easier for them. So when you're going back and forth with 6ix9ine, of course, he's a high-profile guy. So if anything happens to him, of course, the feds are watching. Mm -hmm. He denied... He denied um, the protection, the um, the federal protection, the witness right. protection shit. He denied that. So, of course, you're going to go to jail. You're going to have a high-ass bail. Like, it just don't make sense. You know? Let For me, me ask you a question. Okay, so uh, Takashi told on everyone. He, you know, got his little time served. He got out. He has a career, but it's a different career than what he had before. Now he's doing Spanish music, and he's he's mostly overseas these days, right? Like, he, what that he was, does. He's not the hot New York rapper anymore, and I don't think he ever <laughs> yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel like him going to the Spanish is. I mean, ain't he down with uh Elliot? Right? What is that? Twenty four. What's what is uh, it? Elliot Grange? Elliot. Yeah, isn't that Lucian. Is that, yeah, 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 yeah. Two twenty four. That guy's a genius. His father's a genius. They yeah. got plenty of marketing money behind him. Of course, he's going to do these videos. He just dropped a video, Takashi, and I think it did 20 million views, 21 million views. And so he can go to the to the, to the the Latin music and he could win with it. Right. He could win. Right. But you got to understand, though, before mm -hmm. all the snitching thing happened, he was one of the hottest New York American rappers. Like, of you know course. what I'm saying? Like, he I was. Did that. I was there. I've seen it. You saw it. Like, it was, it was, was a there. real he movement. Was, Listen, let me tell you something. New York took a hit when, when the 6 9 case happened and Pop Smoke got killed. Yeah. I mean, I still love Fabio, A Boogie, but I just felt like some shit was, was happening. Now it's happening again, though. New York is coming back. It's happening again. You know, you got, I mean, you got Ice Spice that's big right now. Okay. Yeah. She just got the record with Nicki. Right. You got the girl Scarlet that got the New York record that's ringing off. 
Yeah, what, what's his name? From the Bronx? Shaq, Shaq just texted me the other day with, with Scarlett. I, yo, <laughs> yeah. I'm loving her right now. I'm loving yeah. her. That New York, you know, I got the Bluetooth. You know, I, you know, I got the, you, I don't know if you got this in your house, but I got the Bluetooth speaking in the shower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm rocking. I'm playing that in the hey. shower. I'm from New York. Get the fuck out of New York. I'm like, because it felt like um, DMX and Onyx. Like when she was saying, get the fuck back. Back the fuck up. It was feeling like mm. Onyx and uh, Onyx and DMX record. So it was real New York hip hop. But nice. come on, I'm always going to root for, for New York rappers. Like Neek Bucks, yeah. that's one of my favorite artists. Okay. He got a record with Fab and... He got a record with Two Chains. It's hard, and he got the album with Hitmaker. So New York is definitely. I always want to see New York win, but I felt like Six Nine and Pop Smoke. Yeah, those are two big hits. That damn. So let me ask you mm -hmm. a question. Mm -hmm. When you look at, for example, the YSL case, Gunna ended up cooperating. You know, said that YSL is a criminal gang. I've seen I've seen members do criminal activities in furtherance of the gang. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He walked away. He is now out, but he hasn't dropped anything since then. Do you think, and Gunna, before he got locked up, was one of the hottest rappers in the country. Of course. You I know, was, that Push and P was like an anthem of course, when he was, dropped it. Of course. Gunner's he in, was at the very high. Gunner and Thugger's definitely in the playlist. Exactly. Exactly. As well as, you know, Future and all them from ATL 21. So Did, everybody got their favorites from Atlanta, of course. Well, in the way that Takashi, uh -huh. after he cooperated. Now, the way Takashi cooperated is a little different than what, what Gunner did, but some people are going to still view it as a similar but type it, of thing. It, it, people look at it as cooperating because if that video wasn't there, remember I said that to you? Yeah. I don't think it would have damaged him because he took like a plea yeah. saying that this wasn't his and his. Right. But then, the that video, video, yeah. I think the video made it worse than what it is because he's not really cooperating. He's not going to take the stand against Thug on, on trial. Yeah. Now, that's super cooperating. I just think the times we in right now, when they seen him say, yeah, yes, the gun is not mine. Yeah, is this an empire? Da, da, da. Because you said that. YSL, they made him admit that YSL was, you know, a, a gang criminal or organization. Yeah, but there was no getting out of that anyway, so he copped a plea. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, if there was no cameras there, it wouldn't look bad because his lawyer put out that they're not cooperating. I know, I've spoken to his lawyer. Yeah, his I've lawyer spoken put to his out lawyer. Right. that they're not cooperating. Right. Cooperating is when you really take the stand and be like, yo, he did it yeah. or he did it or he did it. I just think the way that the plea deal he got and the way they put it on camera, I think the state fucked him over a little it, it bit. It made him look bad. I told you that. Right. So, but but here, so here's the question. Do you think that Gunna could reach the heights? Because Gunna was considered a street rapper, right? Definitely. Can he go back and reach the heights that he was at before with that video being out there? I'm not sure. They took it kind of hard. He, the streets, the streets, the, the, the streets and the internet is undefeated. Remember when they say that? Yeah. You can't, you can't beat them motherfuckers. Yeah. But it's so crazy because... We go in on snitches, but we self-snitch too. Yeah. So it's like a double-edged sword. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like a, a candle burning both ways. So right. it's like we self-snitch. Nigga be on there showing his gun. Meet me here. Show the Addy. We self-snitching, but we mad at niggas when they do snitch. Right. So it's just, it's just a funny time we in. My era, snitches get stitches. That's it. Yeah, man, listen, I, I thought the funniest thing, I remember when uh, I got interviewed by uh, by academics, mm -hmm. I, I said the funniest shit I ever heard was when Meek Mill, when they were like, when Meek and, and academics were arguing on Clubhouse, Meek goes, how are you going to repost our Instagram photos of us holding guns knowing that we on papers? And I'm like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> so you're mad at someone reposting a picture that you've already posted of you holding guns knowing you're on papers, but you're mad yeah, at the reposter, not... Of you posting it yourself, okay? I don't, I don't get it. It's crazy. I don't it's, get it. it's like it's like a it's like a it's like the the internet is a gift and curse because people want to see the jury, they want to see the money, mm -hmm. they want to see the, the the women, they want to see the Leah Jets. Don't get me wrong, I want to see it too. I'm on the internet all day, mm -hmm. so don't. I'm not perfect. I'm just like you. I'm on that shit, addicted like everybody else. My kids, everybody addicted to the internet. It's the new thing, right? Mm -hmm. But the bad thing is when you show that, motherfuckers want to take it. Motherfuckers want to take your chain. They want to take your jewelry. They want to mm -hmm. rob you. They know your location. They just seen you show $100,000. They want to run in your crib now. So it's like it's like a gift and a curse because people want to see it, and it makes artists big, and you fit in a certain kind of image, and we love it. I love seeing the cars, and I love seeing niggas buy their girls shit and jewelry, and 
We all love it. We all love it. But when the negative shit happens with it, that's when we'd be like, damn, he was stupid or damn, that's fucked up. Well, you know what 600 Breezy said, which to me makes a lot of sense? Do you think at some point he could get to where he was before or even bigger? That's the only way that he can do that is when Thug come home and, and be on his side. Aha. Okay. That's the only way. If if Thug don't put out a statement saying that he, he didn't tell on him and that's his brother, or you don't see Thug when Thug get out and be like this and they still be Thug and Gunner how they was, his career ain't going to be able to do it no more. He needs that. 600 Breeze, he's, a, he's smart for that. Yeah. I totally agree with it. But I think once you've seen, like, Little Baby and all them niggas, when you seen Little Baby and all them niggas not um, f- unfollowing him, that was the cosign that Thugger probably ain't really fucking with him. Because people ain't, yeah. you got to think, people ain't stupid no more. When they see Little Baby and all the yeah. heavy hitter niggas, all the superstar niggas from Atlanta unfollow him, yeah. you're going to lose a little value. They're going to be like, man, Thugger probably gave that call, or Thugger might have called Chris Brown or one of them niggas, or one of them niggas, yeah. and been like, yo, this, this nigga no good. You know what I'm saying? That's how I, I viewed the shit, but... Like you said, if Thugger give him the co-sign and be like, yo, this nigga good, he ain't do that. It's just a plea look funny on camera he took. Yeah. Then cool. Cause like you said, his lawyer said he's not gonna cooperate against the stand. Right. That right. would really damage him. But if Thugger say right. that Breezy's right. Yeah, I mean, Breezy's it's, right. It's dicey. Cause I remember I had uh Fredo Bang and we talked about that situation and what he said, and he's Fredo had gone and probably is still going through a similar type of thing. He said, Taking time is cool. Taking a, you know, taking probation, whatever, all that, all that's cool. I would never agree that my label is a game. Cause it's not. It's a label for a reason. You feel me? I would never, I would never agree that my label's a game. I would never agree that my label has did any crimes. Um, even though I was to plead out, I would still say, I'm pleading out. I'm taking this time to get out of jail for, to go back to my family. But I would never agree that this is a, a gang or we committing crimes. Yeah, that that kind of was the red flag right yeah, there. Yeah, he said he would never, he doesn't care how much time he was facing, he would never admit to that because that ultimately puts everyone at a, in a fucked up situation. That's why I told you, you asked me what i do. You was like, yo, what would you have did? I said, I would have sat and waited to see what happened with Thugger. Mm-hmm. That's what I said. I would have sat and waited to see what happened with Thugger instead of me copping out and then looking funny. I yeah. told you that months ago. True. You know what I'm saying? Instead True. of trying to get out, I would have sat there and sat and seen, you know, whatever Thugger do instead of taking that plea where I'm on camera and it could fuck up my whole image. Because it did fuck up his image. Just no, it listen. And, and I think ultimately you could tell when these types of things happen, you could tell the people that have done prison time and the people who have not. Like, for example, you know, we talked about this last time before, like Tory Lanez, you could tell, had never done any prison time right? because he would have just taken a plea deal and, and said, OK, this makes sense. But I instead, it's like, I'm so scared to go to prison. I'm going to throw this Hail Mary. You know, and now, like, you know, Tory's paying, from what I understand, 500000 a month retainer mm. for his lawyer. Remember what I told you about that? I said I would slap my lawyer if I spend <laughs> right. half a million be, and you don't give me that cop out. Give me that cop out. Yeah. Well, now he's spending 500000 a month to try to get a retrial. Listen, I'm the cop-out king. The cop-out king. Let me cop out. I don't got no Cody. I ain't telling on nobody. Listen, it's just I'm me. copping out. Yo, let me cop out. What you got, five years on the table? Sure. Let me get that. Good behavior. I could probably be out on three. Exactly. And I'm a celebrity. Probably do two and a half. Right. Probation, ankle bracelet. Might not be able to come to the U.S. again, but- Fuck it. Fuck it. At least I'll be free. I'll be, I'll be home in 24 months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I'm, I, that's me. I'm copping out. I told you that, that too. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody say I'm sh- I shot him, I'm copping out. I told you I ain't right. playing with the with the with the st- with the state or the feds money. Right. They keep pushing back his uh, his sentencing date because they're trying to like get their appeal together. They're saying that there are certain things that like put him at a disadvantage. But w- we'll see what happens. He was found guilty, and I don't think. See what people don't understand. They're like, oh, he'll just appeal it. In order for an appeal to work, that means that the judge that's over your judge, a panel of three judges, the Supreme Court of the state, three of those Supreme Court state judges right. have to all agree that the judge below them made a serious mistake and there needs to be a retrial. Listen, this is and, and, that and is not even, easy to and do. Even with a retrial, you could lose to that. You could lose again. So let's, yeah. I know, come on, bro. I know the law. 
mm-hmm. some way. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I know the Lord so good that I could tell you he wouldn't be going through none of this shit if he purely just copped out. Yeah. That's all it fucking come down to. Right. Cop out, you wouldn't be spending this half a million. Like mm-hmm. I told you, I slapped a my month. Half a yeah, million a month. Nah, you ain't going to spend that shit, man. Get the fuck out of here. I'm copping out. Our last interview, mm-hmm. uh, when I was comparing BMF to power, mm-hmm. you accused me of divide and conquer. Which one do you like better? Because I, I, I can't. I, I can't give you. First of all, I, I will tell you right now. All, I think can't. BMF is a better show. Look, no, no. You know why? I'm just saying. Look, 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 you know I've why? I watch both. You, you know why you can't rate that? Because they're both not on at the same time. If they was both on at the same time, where I could watch Ghost and watch BMF, then I could rate which one is better. They both fire. Uh, I don't know, man. They go see the industry. just because they're not on at you the see, same time. You here can't we go. Compare. Here we go with this divide and conquer shit. Yeah, definitely. I'm calling bullshit. Why are you saying I'm that? calling bullshit. Because that means that the Emmys, the Grammys, the Billboard. Oh, you got me on that The NBA you Finals. You that's me. all divide and conquer, huh? No, everyone should be a uh, winner. You got we me should on, all hug you, you, and say we all did a good job. You got me on, on that one. But I just feel like, you know what I feel like? I feel like like this, just classic shows. Like I always tell people, like mm-hmm. The Wire is a classic. You know what I mean? Um, Sopranos is a classic. Mm-hmm. Breaking Bad. We can name... 100 classic series, right? right? Oz was another one, mm-hmm. you know? But when I look at right now on TV, like, there's only a couple of things that, that you could watch. No, but when you when you look on TV now, you got BMF, right, mm-hmm. that just came off. You got Power, which which big fan of, both mm-hmm. shows. You got Snowfall, big fan of. Yeah, I, just I love, I love that. Snowfall. Oh, yeah. Snowfall, I just watched the, to Crazy. the end. Yeah. I think there's one more episode. There's one more for, episode. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I wonder why his moms did what she did, man. I was crazy. tired. I wanted to stop. <laughs> ah, I know. See, those are the kind of shows I know. that. Right there on the phone. That's when you know when your emotions are into it, you know a show was good. I, <laughs> his moms had me so fucking mad. And I was so mad at Franklin to why he even fucking bring his moms around for I everything. know, right? That's what had me fucking upset. <laughs> and then um, and then you got, uh, what's that? What am I missing? I said, yeah, BMF Power. Oh, Godfather Hall. Yeah. Off of Harlem. Because you know I love my man. What's my man? Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker is a great actor. Mm-hmm. Um, the dude that plays Malcolm X is good. Yeah. His daughter is good. The mm-hmm. wife is good. Yeah. Um, good I forgot what, what, what's my man that playing mad Italian movies, the white dude. But um, he's good too. Yeah. Like So I like Godfather Harlem too. So to me, that's four good shows. Right. As long as I got different stuff to watch because I binge watch. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. I'm into my TV, my movies. I don't. I don't play when it comes to that. Well, I actually looked it up. Uh, Power Book 2 got like 500,000 viewers. BMF got like 200,000 viewers. So numbers-wise, Power is doing better than BMF, but it's also a bigger franchise. There, there's more history behind it and everything else like that. But if you look at numbers, Power does better than BMF. Okay. You know what I mean? And BMF Season 1 did better than Season 2. So hopefully there will be a Season 3. Okay. I'm hoping. You know what well, I'm saying? What was numbers in Season 1? I can look it up. Okay, so season one, uh, episode one had 369,000. Well, well, if, okay, if you want to look at uh, episode one or episode eight? If episode you look at, eight. Okay, if you look at episode eight mm-hmm. of BMF season one, it got half a million viewers. Mm. When you look at episode 18, which is the final episode of season two, it got 319,000 viewers. Less people watch. A little bit less people. So when you look at the numbers... BMF is doing okay, even though I personally like BMF better than Power. That's my personal, you know, but I also have a little bit of a connection to BMF. I hung out with those guys, whatever. I've interviewed a bunch of those dudes. But I, I was just annoyed that you called it divide and conquer because I was like, I'm not oh, dividing no, no. and conquering. You I'm got, just telling you, you what I like better. No, like, everybody, you know what I mean? like, I'll just be fucking with you, man. <laughs> everybody got an opinion, man. It's right. all good. Okay. But, you know, let's get them numbers up, man. I didn't yeah. even realize that, but, you know, shout to uh, Lou Meach and Mike mm-hmm. and Gianni and everybody on them shows, man. Yeah. It's popping. They all superstars now. Uh-huh. Uh, TMZ caught up with you not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And they asked you about Lil Uzi Vert mm-hmm. and the satanic comments. Yeah. He said that uh, Lil Uzi Vert got on stage and said he introduced a city girl to Satan. Yeah. And you had a problem with that. No, I didn't I didn't have a problem with well, it. Well, you said that you were raised Catholic I and said, you don't. Nah, nah, you're not... I said I came into church. I don't really know nothing about Satan. Yeah. You know, I know he got the upside cross on his tongue and all that. That's what he do. Yeah. Like, I like his music. His music's cool. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? The damn, you hear it every two minutes on the radio. Mm-hmm. But I just, I'm not into the satanic thing. That's not my thing. I'm in believing in God. That's Do you believe in Satan? Nah, I mean, I believe that yeah, the devil is around, but I'm not. I'm not worshiping Satan. I believe. Right, the I don't devil, say you're worshiping Satan, but do you believe there is a Satan? I believe when you see people do crazy stuff in the world, like some people, like when they just go shoot up shit and do shit for, like kill kids and all that. Yeah, you you the devil. That's just me. You got you don't a devil. Think that's mental illness. Or... I, think, I think the devil is some some the devil has to, and I could be mental illness too. But I believe the devil is somewhere in you when you could do something crazy like that to kill a kid or kill an innocent lady or, you know, just do something like that or just randomly go shoot somebody for no reason. Because people blame video, music game, video and music and shit like that. And I don't believe that. When I came up a kid, we had Duck Hunt. We had (laughs) fucking, we had motherfucking music. We had Run DMC. We had fucking violent music and other shit like that. But that didn't make me want to go out and do something to nobody for no reason. Yeah. You know, even when I sold drugs, I was a nice guy. I helped the old lady across the street or open the door. That's how I grew up. So, well, but in that same thing, there's probably certain people that would consider that some of the things you did would be Satan, like selling drugs and everything else like of that. Of course. You know, know what I'm, I'm saying? Not, I'm, I'm not judging you because I personally, you know, from my point of view, selling drugs, you know, listen, if, if someone hey, wants listen, to buy it, I'm you're never, selling it, listen, it is what it is. I never said, I'm not judging, but look, certain people would say, Tony Yeo is evil because he sold drugs. You're right. Or, or Tony Yeo has passed or whatever, right? I am never said I was perfect. All I know is when I leave the house every day, I say my prayers and ask God to protect me. There you go. That's me. Like I said, some people pray to Allah. Some people don't believe in God, atheists. Some people could believe in the devil. That's what you believe in. Mm-hmm. Satan, you could, that, I have no problem with that. That's what you want to do. So I have, I love Little Uzi. I love his music. But me, for me, I, you know, I came up in, the church, and I don't really know anything about Satan. I just know there's one God and one God only. And that's my high power. There you go. That's it. One of the things, I think this was brought up on uh, on The Breakfast Club. There's been a lot of talk of a, you know, a potential Little Wayne versus 50 Cent versus. Mm-hmm. That would be a hell of a versus because both these artists have serious catalogs, serious following, serious right. history. right. And what you mentioned, which was interesting, was that Wayne had been doing it a lot longer than 50. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I remember, like I said, we was on a cash money tour back With in the Wayne. days. Cash How money. old was Wayne at the time? Wayne was little. I remember he being on stage. He was a little kid. Like 15, he was 16? Little, it, was on, it was one of the most amazing shows. The big timers, they had the dancers. They had all kinds of floating objects. So for me, I'm I'm looking at this shit like, oh, this shit is amazing. Mm. It was the Cash Money Rough Riders tour. I'm seeing DMX. I'm seeing Swiss Beats, The Locks. And remember, we not on. We not on. We the opening night. We doing how to rob. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there. I'm seeing Lil Wayne in the crowd. I'm seeing Baby. I'm seeing BG, Juvenile. They was the biggest thing in the fucking world moving at that time. Mm. So he came way before us. 50 came with Columbia, How to Rob, and um, um, Power the Dollar. That was like his first album. Man. Oh, it was that tour. Oh, so this yeah. is before Get yeah. Rich and well, Die Power, Trying. Yeah. I don't even think the Power Dollar dropped yet. It might have dropped. Or might have had not. I'm not sure. Huh. But this is before. Was this when was... Master P was paying for the tours and stuff like that, or Master P? Nah, this is. You know what I'm talking Col- about though, right? This Master P Colum- said he he paid for the early tours or, or something. Which ones? Certain tours of Fifty Cent, Master P said he was involved in. No, you're not sure. I'm not sure. All I okay. know is um he probably did book him and shout to Master P. He's a yeah. legend, you know, and right. you know he's an icon in this business. But I'm not sure about that. I just know that um when he was on Columbia. With Tony Pope, that uh, we we was on a Cash Money Rough Rider tour. I'm quite mm. sure Columbia set that up. You know what right. I'm saying? That's what I remember. I always remember Columbia, so I remember that. And we was on that tour, and we seeing Wayne, and we seeing DMX, and you know we not on yet. Fifty just had to had to how to rob, and you know ruffle some feathers, but it was a hot ass fucking record. Yeah, it was a hell of a record. Yeah, it ruffled a lot of feathers. A hell, pun, hell of a record. Pun, rest in peace, Jay Z. Yeah, everyone got it. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It Tony Pope of... got it, and they produced the record. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It would be a hell of a versus though. Fifty Cent versus Lil Wayne. I mean, I think if Fifty go against anybody, it'd be a hell of a versus. If Dr. Dre goes against anybody, if Jay Z, anybody, Diddy, any of these guys go against somebody, it bring versus back. But like, like, but versus was. Do you feel like Versus was bigger when we was in the house, though? Because it did yeah, feel kind of. Yeah. It felt like although although the uh, the the locks dipset Versus I thought was epic. Oh, we that was after COVID, right? 
Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, you know, it was all sort of coming out of COVID, you know, but it was a crowd. It was a show. But it was, it was still, still kind of a lockdown at that point. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, but not really. Because I remember watching it online. But not really, but it was... Yeah. Half and getting half. better. It was getting better. Because I remember coming to the city and it was a ghost town. You ain't seen not one person. That was the most craziest thing I seen. Yeah, it was it was depressing so, in New York. Yeah, yeah it was like COVID was real drug addicts were on the street smoking bro, crack. Like it was, it was weird, was, like man, shooting up. I'm like, COVID what was the, the worst for me. You know, one thing about me is I love to travel, so that was the worst for yeah. me. Just sitting down for damn near two years trying to figure shit out what's next to do, and that's when I went to the Welcome to Coaching podcast and went back to music. So. It, I took advantage of it too. Started doing Vlad TV. Yeah, I started doing Vlad <laughs> TV too. So oh my God, that worked out. Yep, everything worked out. On the Breakfast Club, you made a comment. I kept listening to it over and over again. I couldn't quite figure out what you were saying. What did Fifty Cent say to James Cruz about Diddy? Oh man, I don't want to kill. You I said it. <laughs> I'm asking you just to repeat what you already said. Oh, he said, "I right, Fifty said James Cruz f Diddy." Oh, like I had sex with Diddy. Some crazy okay. shit. Okay. <laughs> But come on, I didn't believe it was true. You know what I mean? Shout to Diddy, Cruz, and 50. I didn't believe it was true, but he said it. I said, like, yo, he, And he said it in front of everybody. Crazy. He just, you know, 50 just say crazy shit. 50's it crazy. We know it ain't true, but 50 just say some crazy shit. The motherfucker is crazy. That's who he is as a person. 50 I'm and James to. Cruz always had this really funny relationship, yeah. man. I, I'm not quite sure where it came from. James Cruz always held it down, but I don't know. Like, he, they did have a funny relationship. I felt like his relationship was more with Chris Lighty than... Oh, it was, definitely. Didn't, didn't no, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think, do you think that it changed after James cooperated over the whole Hot 97 shooting incident? I don't even think it was that. I just think that 50 just don't, they just don't like that nigga. I've seen mm. him scream on James Cruz multiple times. Really? Yes, it's not the first time. Listen, me and James have had our issues. But I mean, James have le has left me outside at a party. That he's he probably was, mad at me now because I told that story. Yeah, about maybe. Who cares? But, it is what it nah, is. Nah, but Cruz is cool. <laughs> James man. will get over I it. I like Cruz. I love his whole family. Yeah, no, like I said, I, I've had issues with James in the past. He's done sideways stuff with me, but at the end of the day, it, whatever, it's business. I've, had, I've had him back on. I've honestly, had him back on the show. Honestly, like, he it's did whatever. something sideways with me too. Yeah. But I don't take nothing personal in the industry no more. Right. You know, he did something sideways with me and it's all good. And I don't mean to throw him under the bus. It's just a lot of crazy James Cruz stories. Yeah. I've seen 50 yell at him multiple times, but I've seen 50 yell at Plenty of people multiple times. Right. But, you know, Violator was definitely something that I love to go to. Like, rest in peace, Chris Lighty. Yeah. James Cruz was there. Somebody that, you know, I love, fuck with. Um, um, Mona Scott, mm -hmm. um, Claudine, you know. And and um, like I said, that's when it comes to the story. Like, a lot of people didn't like Chris Lighty because he was so successful. Think about all the big names that he had. He had everybody in the game from Diddy to 50, K Slay. Nori, um, Freeway, State Property, all the motherfuckers he managed. Buster Rhymes. Buster, uh, he managed at LL. Elliot. Like yeah. Claudine, I remember Claudine used to be with LL all the time. Shout out mm. to LL, one of my favorite rappers. And I just remember being there and just being excited to be in the office because you never know who you're going to see. I remember Yandy being there. That's mm. how I remember Yandy. Yeah. Shout out to Yandy was there. I can't forget her. Like, it was just the place to go and the place to be, be in violated office, you never know you're going to see Freeway, you're going to see Buster, you're going to see K. Slay. You know what I mean? So. Well, uh, one of our members, uh, one of our YouTube uh, mm -hmm. Vlad TV members brought up an interesting question. Mm -hmm. His name is Paradise Player. He said that, uh, did 50 and Prodigy know each other before, before they blew up? Because I guess in Prodigy's book, he said that E-Money Bags invited Prodigy to go see 50 in the hospital after he got shot. Right. You know about this? No, I mean, I probably, that I believe that that's official. 50, yeah. you know, when he got shot, he didn't want nobody to really see him like that. Uh -huh. I know he didn't want none of his own people to see him. But, you know, E-Money, it sounds believable because E-Money was 50 right, right hand man. And, oh, so they were super close like yeah, that? Yeah, E-Money oh, and 50, okay. yeah. E-Money Bags used to be in the studio, all that. Right, because there there was a story, an alleged story over E Money Bags and Fifty Cent sticking up a dice game, that's floating sure, out you, there. You never, yo, you never you know, know. You I, never know. I don't want to say too much. Right. I don't want to say too much. I don't need. <laughs> let's stop talking about Fifty. I don't need him mad at me and flipping on me next. Okay. But him and E Money sticking up a dice game, that's a new one. It might have happened. Right. You never well, know. There was a Fifty Cent tweet, and I couldn't find the Instagram post because it had been taken down. But t Fifty C, uh, tweeted. That boy in the white jacket, a sucker, man. I stopped E-Money Bags from killing him. They had beef. And then it was a link to an Instagram post that was no longer there. So, right. yeah, the two of them, 
Now you say that was right hand man. It sounded like they were super close. Listen, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Troy. Big nose Troy. I know his son. And, you know, I, I was familiar with his fa- some of his family. Shout out to his moms and everybody. And um, shout to Hamo. Hamo's still alive out of that combo. And rest in peace to eat money, but ain't many bags. His brother's still around. Shout to him. It's a different and, Hamo. It's not the Hamo that. Nah, it's, it's, that three, it's, three, it's three dangerous men in Queens. It's Troy, not the Hamo from Brooklyn. Yeah. It's Troy, big nose Troy. Hamo and E Money Bags. Those are the three amigos. Those guys are dangerous. When they come for you, well, Troy, well, Black Troy, Justice isn't part of that list? Troy, no, Black Justice, you know, rest in peace to him. Yeah. Black Justice, you know, he's a separate entity. But it was just them three. Got it. It was Troy, E Money Bags, and you know what I'm saying? And Hamo. Hamo's still alive. Troy, rest in peace, passed away. And rest in peace to E Money Bag. Yeah. You know, Black Justice, of course, he's a legend too. In his own lane, but yeah. you know that was more Black Just, Chaz, Preem. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that click. Yeah, that was Got that it. click. Yeah. Another uh, question from a member, uh, Robbie Santana. He said, "What is your favorite G Unit diss record of all time?" I would have to say, "I Smell Pussy." Mm. That that one right there was just like it was like a club record. It was like a club record that was r- playing in the clubs that still could perform overseas anywhere in the world. And every G Unit fan remembers that. I smell pussy, is that you word? And that right there was the beginning huh. to, the, to the ending of finishing them guys. So it was a good satisfaction for me. I was happy, like I was, cause I, you know, I never liked Ja Rule, I'll never like Irv. It's just something about them. And like I said, I would never like them guys ever. Beef could never be. It just, beef never dies, it just gets old. Just as long as you stay where you stay and we stay where we stay, mm-hmm. it won't be no melee. Was it you know? Wankster around? Yeah, Wankster around was. Around the same time as Yeah, and Wankster was Pussy. another diss record. That's that, what I'm saying. That and that destroyed, became, well, that was the first single that 50 came out yeah, with. But you on gotta understand, right? when we dropped, listen, when, when Ja Rule dissed Eminem, we was in Eminem studio. When Ja Rule and Benzino and everybody disses, Benzino still talking. I don't know why. He's like infatuated with Eminem. He's like, Michael Jackson. He's got some Michael Jackson saying, Michael Jackson said. Yeah, I don't know about that. He's and, infatuated with Eminem. But, let, but let me, I don't know hold, why. Let, let, let me, let me clear something M, up. Huh? Recently, Benzino, like I remember when BTV said. He said something about Michael Jackson he, well, saying BTV, he's happy well, this well, Benzino says Michael. something about me also. Because because after the BTB Savage situation, he goes, oh, the curse of Flat TV. I'm never going back and doing that interview. Yeah, I did again. see that. Yeah, Benzino has been banned from Vlad TV a year ago because he threatened one of my female employees. Well, why, so, would he, why would he do that? Because he wasn't getting his payment fast enough. So he started to threaten my payment person. Oh, man, that's crazy. Which, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's, a, it's like everyone gets paid. Everyone's always gotten paid. He ended up getting paid. But it was like he started threatening my female employee who was in charge of payments because he wasn't getting his money fast enough. So we had, had to make a company decision not to have Benzino on anymore. So him saying, I'll never do Vlad TV anymore, he's not invited to do Vlad TV anymore. Yeah. So let me just put that I don't know why Benzino there. still talk about, 20 years later, still talk about M. It's like ridiculous. Like sometimes I look at this stuff like it's so old, man. Like I got the stories, but I just tell the story so the people will know. You know what I'm saying? So I always have my side of the story out there because mm-hmm. I'm not no bitch. I'm not going to sit there and let you tell your story or your narrative, false narrative about me or anybody in my team. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. So my whole thing with Benzino is like, you've been factuated with him since the Source magazine. Because you, because I, maybe I think in his eyes he felt like Eminem and 50 and us took down the Source magazine in a way when Double XL came. And like you wasn't getting the big interviews from Fifty. Uh, I mean, listen, I, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, to I, I interviewed with all the Dave Mays, and the Source magazine went down because of the, the decisions that Dave and Benzino made. The reason why Source magazine went down was because they took out this huge line, like they, they took out this huge investment for millions of dollars, which they ended up using to build Source Digital. And they spent millions of dollars building a damn website that no one went to. And they lost all that money. And once they lost all the money, they basically put up the source name as collateral. So the company went to bankruptcy. And then Londell McMillan ended up buying it for pennies on the dollar. And then he you know, took it into the toilet as well. But what I'm saying is you can't blame 
G Unit, Eminem, Interscope for the fall well, of the source. That, they fucked that, it up themselves. Look, look, when all that shit happened, well, we was in the middle of the beef right there. When all that right. shit, when the source was fucking up, it looked like mm -hmm. we destroyed the source. Yeah. In my eyes. Right. That's what it looked like. Right. You know, because Benzino, the nail in the coffin, was the nail in the coffin. But he's still talking about Eminem. Like, it is no, what it is, man. And no disrespect to Benzino, because I don't do the internet shit. I know he might fuck yeah, yo and all that. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. We ran down on Benzino before. He wanted to respond to that, but we weren't interviewing him anymore. So I was like, nah, we're good. Yeah. What? To me? Well, about what you said about running down on him. He had reached out. So I want to respond to Yayo. So go ahead. Do it yourself. You don't well, have to do fuck it. Did, well, it's the truth. We ran down in Miami. We asked him he was going to give him the pass. He said he was going to give him the pass. Cool. I was on my bully shit back then. Now I'm chilling. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm not with the internet shit because that's how people get shot, got killed. I'm not with none of that back and forth internet shit. I'm just telling you facts, no fiction. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It was a war. Am I mad at Benzino now? No. Nobody's mad. That was 20 years ago. I don't want to do nothing to you. Hopefully you don't want to do nothing to me. Yeah. As well as all the niggas that talk shit that was used to be down, not down with us, like... I don't give a fuck. That was 20 years ago. If you're harboring some shit from 20 to 15 years ago, then you must be out your fucking mind, bro. Because when I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about none of these people. Well, the reason why you're not thinking about those people is because mm -hmm. you ultimately did well over right? the course of okay. those last 20 years. If you're broke and fucked up and you're thinking that my life could have been a little different if this person didn't do this to me or me and this person didn't get into this altercation, like Benzino has been fucked up for a while, unfortunately. And we tried working with him and then he well, ends up just well, bugging you know out. But you know what? His blessings is his daughter. His daughter is doing... And that's great. But him and his daughter so, will beef with each no, other publicly and, on and, top and, of that, which is weird. Like, and that's you know? something that his, his family business and he got to fix. Yeah. But his blessing could be through his daughter. Yeah. So he, I don't know if he's doing good or not or whatever his business finances. That's none of my business. But my whole thing is Coyle Ray is doing a successful artist. Yes. And that could be his blessing in disguise. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So he might not be, because because we, you know, he was successful. Had the Source magazine, mm -hmm. Made Men. I remember them being on the tour. Yeah. I'm going to be on the tour. We was on, that's how I know Benzino on them. Is seeing them on the Made Men tour. And I liked that group back in the days. They mm -hmm. had some some shit. Yeah. I remember Made Men. Yeah, Rock the Party of, was a good song that Benzino a, put out by yeah, himself. Yeah, they had a couple yeah. of records, Made Men. But what right. I'm saying is, fast forward, now we're successful. And I remember them being on the tour. with with That was the Cash Money Rough Riders. Now we're successful. Blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. Your daughter's successful. You a man that... You and Dave made made history in the game. Right. But to harbor something from 15, 20 years ago, he could just be speaking his piece, but Eminem never really say nothing. Eminem is the type of nigga that could watch you. He'll he'll make a diss record to destroy you and just chill in the cut. Right. You know what I mean? Shout to Eminem. But what I'm saying is we was called, we even got called house niggas for fucking with Eminem. Like the source, they would take it to a mm. whole nother level. That's when the disrespect for me was like, well, damn, what does color have to do with anything with music? What does color have to do with anything with people? I don't care what color or religion you are. That's just me. We from New York. It's a melting pot of people. We grew up around all kinds of people. So I don't give a fuck what color you are. I don't look at you as a culture vulture because you white. That could be somebody else's opinion. You know what I mean? It's not mine. Grandmaster Flash or one of them said something about Eminem. Like, that's his opinion. Melly Mel. Melly Mel, my yeah. fault. Sorry, Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> Melly Mel said something about Eminem. My whole thing is, he did for me, he did more for me, him and 50, than anybody has ever did in my career. Yeah. To me, the Free Yayo shirt, you even still remember it. It's 20 mm -hmm. years later. Yeah. That's your favorite shirt. Yeah, the Free Yayo shirt. I need that, Yayo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, my I whole told thing you is, to, to, to reprint it. To the, to the day it's all said and done, I'm going to shout out Eminem. But everybody always blow shots at Eminem. He wouldn't be on the list. He wouldn't be that. Eminem wouldn't be on no list if he wasn't a fucking lyrical tyrant. If he wasn't fucking nice with it, they wouldn't even be mad at him. Right. People but being will that, pull, yeah, people listen, will always pull out the racial no disrespect aspect. to Mel, Mel, Melly yeah. Mel, I know he's a legend in the game. Yes. I'm not here to get on here and bash people and do those sold on wounds like niggas do on this internet shit. I don't do that. You know what I mean? I come up here, be me, say what I want to say, and do what I want to do. But at the end of the day, bro, Eminem is a lyrical... What was he, number three on Billboard? Number two? In terms of what? Like, on the list. Oh, like the most records sold nah, it was Jay-Z number one. 
You, you remember the Billboard list that just came out? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't pay attention to those lists. Yeah, but that Billboard list, he was, I think he was number three yeah. or number four. He deserves to be on there, bro. Absolutely. Come on. Now, listen, as people well are accused- big, As well as Tupac, as well as Jay and 50 yeah. and Wayne. Everybody, exactly. I'm Listen, I'm not on it. Banks ain't on it. Certain niggas ain't on it. It's all good. But, yeah. you know, whoever's on there, salute to them. They definitely de- deserve to be on it. You had a situation where I guess your dad was living with you at the time. Mm-hmm. And he was looking at one of your billboards, one of your plaques. Yeah, and a bullet fell out. A bullet fell out. Yeah, a bullet fell out. And I think it could have been that day or the next day my mom's house got shot up. The bullet that fell out of that plaque, where did that bullet come from? The bullet, because 50 Cent had the the 50 Cent plaque where he sold 11 million records. Uh It's a big plaque and it got bullets all around it. Oh, okay. So I have this above my door. So when you walk in and you turn around my door, you would see it there. That plaque used to be there. So, oh, so it was placed there. It's not like the, someone the, shot the, the plaque. No, no. It was placed there. It was in the yeah. plaque. Uh-huh. But the bullet, and I swear to my dead father, I would not lie to you. My father found, it's a fake bullet. It's like a bullet edge almost. Like small, it's not a whole bullet. It's like a bullet edge glued onto a plaque. Yeah. The point is that fell off the plaque. This is why I and always the say- the next day your mom's house yeah, got shot. This is why I always say go off your signs. Sometimes huh. you'll get signs. Trust me. And that was a sign for me. And I know it sounds unbelievable. Yeah, blah, 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 whatever. And this is the plaque. And what's strange about it, Vlad, this is the plaque that's facing inside my house, and it's above my door. Hmm. So it's above my door. So my father's like, what the fuck is this? It's a true story. I swear to God, I would not lie to you. Yeah, well, rest in peace to your dad. I lost my dad as well, man. Yeah, it's, man. It's, it's, it's tough. Gets, it gets it's tough, tough to when go you get through. older and the parents, yeah. the parents get older. But, you know, people never know what you're going through. You know, you know I'm just happy, you know, like, like, I still move around and I've been working. You've been seeing me on the Breakfast Club and stuff like that. But my mom's had a heart attack. When? Um, Like like a couple of weeks ago. Oh, man. So it's like, I don't uh, tell everybody. Uh, how is she? She's great now. You know, God God bless. You know. Is she paralyzed at all? No, nah, no, nah, she's okay, great. Good. She had to get the stints in the okay, heart and stuff good, like that. Good, But, you know, I mean, you know, I got one parent left. A lot of people don't know what you're going through. You just, I just, I just camouflage you when I just keep working. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, shout out to my moms and everything. Uh, sorry to hear through. that, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's tough when you get older and yeah, your parents. I mean, we're all getting older. I'm, I'm about yeah. to turn 50 this year. Yeah, and you're, yeah. you're close to that age as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, we only have a certain amount of time left yeah, for our you, parents. You know, you get older and, and, and your parents get older and it sucks, yeah. man. Rest in peace to your pops too, bro. Thank you. Um, I sent you an AI version of 50 Cent rapping over someone else's song. Right, right, right. And it sounds yeah, just like a- And they had the AI version of um, Rihanna. Yeah, it was an AI they had the version. AI version yeah. of um, um, Drake. Yo, there's a new Drake and Weekend song that's kind of a banger that's all AI. Yeah, but the, the labels already said they're getting on that shit, man. Well, they, they could, but technically there might not be a legal basis of it. You see there's what I'm saying? Because it's gonna- like, Unless you say this is a Drake record or this is a 50 cent record and try to sell it as that, you could just put it out as a, hey, this is right. it, a it, creation it, it, I made and you could guess who these people are yourself. Definitely. I think, but I don't think it would go that far. Though. I think, I think people would ch- joke and laugh at it. Like when you heard Drake and Ice Spice and um, <laughs> right. Rihanna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's people that will never do the records, but I think people will just go check it out for the shock value of it. But where can you sell it at? Nowhere. So where would it be? There? Yeah, it's wild. It'll probably be on YouTube, but it won't be for sale. People will, you know, yeah. check it and it'll stream because I was laughing at it when I was hearing it. But, you know, I don't see it. You know, I see labels. I seen a, a something online where they were saying labels are already on the AI voices. I mean, listen, labels were on It's almost Napster, scary, man. It's a lot, a lot of crazy shit happens. It's almost to scary. Me, to me, you know what's going to get wild mm-hmm. is when... For example, video, like you already have like face swapping and stuff like that. I remember there's a video of like Godfrey doing a Denzel Washington interview on our platform. And as he's doing, you know, he's doing the impression, they do a face swap and they actually show Denzel. And it's, it's crazy how accurate it is. I mean, didn't you, you, know say, didn't you hear Elon Musk say something about artificial intelligence is one of the scariest things he thinks? Wait till they have full blown AI porn. Where you could basically plug in, uh, I want to see, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Beyonce having a threesome with, yo, like, bro, we just, bro, <laughs> you we, know, Pooh Shiesty, Gucci yo, Man. <laughs> yo, bro, we was just, look, look, we just was talking about 
they got robotic dogs now that's about to be yeah. in Times Square and, and all the cameras and facial recognition. Just yep. imagine in the next five to ten years what they're going to have, bro. They already got It'll flying cars and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, technology is going so at a fast rate now. Mm-hmm. That's why even people, when they get out of jail, they be like, damn, five-year bid feel like a 10-year bid because the, the rate of how fast the technology is going. Yeah. Every day, something new. Rest in peace, Coolio. It was recently yeah, announced Coolio. that uh, he died of a fentanyl overdose. Rest in and peace. And you know, listen, I've interviewed Coolio before. He's talked about his crack use in the past. He said he got off it. He got back on. He got back off. So he's had drug issues that are well publicized before. But to have yet another notable person die from fentanyl yet again, yeah. uh, you know, rest in peace, Gangster Boo. I'm not sure if the final... Autopsies there, but everyone's case. assuming that it was fentanyl. Right. You know what I mean? So many little peep, uh, Big Scar, who was like 20-something years old. I remember Boosie, you know, when I interviewed last time, he said that he suggested everyone go back to crack. I'm promoting it. You're promoting Fuck crack. that. <laughs> fentanyl killing all the junkets who've been junkets. I'm talking about this killing the junkets who've been junkets for forever. Yes. Soon as they hit it, they dead. Right. Crackhead, this nigga shoot threes, this nigga shoot basketball, this nigga, this nigga run, run a hundred miles, this nigga get sang, this nigga fix your car motor, been doing this for 20 years, this motherfucker still running around the neighborhood. When have you ever heard crackheads hitting the pipe and dying the first time? Never. Never! This spitting all shit is different. I would much rather crack. Right, right. You'll be funnier. You'll live longer. (laughs) And, you know, listen, man, like we all know, I personally know crackheads that have been doing crack for like 30, 40 years. I mean, honestly, my look at the fentanyl epidemic is um, it's a sad thing because, you know, you even hear about your kids' friends dying. Mm. That's when it gets terrible. Like I'm in the suburbs and, you know, you hear about kids that, you know, sometimes these kids buy the black market pills with the fentanyl in it and it's bye-bye. You know, so it's not only affecting the artists and everything. When it starts affecting the kids and, you know, one little smidget of that stuff, you can die. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, it's a terrible thing. You know, when we came up, we didn't we didn't know what no fentanyl was now. But now it's killing everybody. It's killing these celebrities. It's in the pills. It's in the coke. You know, only thing is not in the weed is, is in the weed. God bless. Got my weed strand coming soon, too. Look out for that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Shout to Green Label. Shout to Steve. Shout to Burner. Shout to Greg. We coming, Scotty mm. Skittles, Passport Boys. We'll be in stores. We're going all over. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Cali, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Colorado, New York City. Look out for that. But it's not in the weed. The fentanyl's not in the weed. I smoke weed all day. Thank no, God. It's not in the but weed. But if you, for, for, for like people that, you know, sniff coke and shit, it's dangerous, man. It's yeah. like you're rolling the fucking dice. You're hearing people in Hollywood dying. You're hearing little kids getting fucked up pills. It's like you don't even know what the fuck you're taking. So, I mean, it's a terrible right. thing, man. For example, when you look at like the junkie culture, I remember me and Turk had an interview about this and he was addicted to heroin and, and everything else like that. Yeah. What he says, which was kind of crazy to me, which you probably, you know, have a little more yeah. experience with is that when you hear, if, you, if you're an addict and you hear someone overdosing, everyone flocks to try to get that batch. Some dope fiends want the dope that the person that OD'd off. That's how crazy it is. Coming up, when I was coming up, when you hear a person OD, be like, man, he just OD'd off that. We used to be like, man, where that shit at? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Like, you want that shit that that nigga OD'd off of. And a lot of people want that shit that dude OD'd off of. They want, they looking for it right now. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You see Hell what I'm yeah. saying? Hell yeah. It sounds crazy from the outside. You would think, oh, that's the last thing I want to take. But no, all the junkies will go, oh, they want to be right at the edge of death. If they feel like someone overdosed, they'll try to get that same batch yeah. and take it themselves, which ends up, you have a chain that's reaction they, of people dying. They need, they need the 12, rest of peace, Mac Miller. I think he yeah, died of fentanyl Mac, as well. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why you need the 12 steps of ASAP and getting that program because uh, I don't think any drug is risking your life. You know, your life is more, more important than a fucking high. So, you know, like I said, a couple of years ago, people sniff coke, do whatever they want to do, and not have a worry in the world. Now... Everybody's fucking dying off of fentanyl. Where the fuck does this shit come from? Who's making it? Who's supplying it? And it's coming from China. I heard and, a lot and, of it. And yeah, China yeah. and you know and, and and but they saying a key of that shit pure up and kill fucking millions. Like or a some whole shit. city. 
and kill a city. Yeah. So my whole thing is, why would people want that? And now, for the people that are selling it, they're giving you murder charges. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with it, but I, I, but I see where it comes. I see where they're coming from with it. Like it'll make a motherfucker. For me, it'll make a motherfucker scared to be a drug dealer. Like, because back in the days when we sold drugs, we wasn't worried about fucking catching a murder catching charge. Murder charge, yeah. Is it worth catching a murder charge? Like the guy from The Wire. They went back to the tapes. Oh, they, yeah, Michael look, K. Look, Williams. They, yeah. they found him, the guy from the wire, they found him. They found the dude that sold to him. Right. And they hit him with a murder charge. It took yeah. them a couple of months, but they went back on their cameras. Yep. Did they do diligence, the diligence, and they found him on the cameras. Now, is selling drugs worth having a murder charge? Nah. I'd rather not even sell drugs. That's just really my answer. I'd rather not sell drugs. I'm not saying it's wrong because you got to think about the parents that die mm -hmm. or or the brothers that die. So you fentanyl is not a good thing because a lot of people's dying and they got family and it affects a lot of people. So my whole thing is like for the person that's selling it, all the police got to do is go to your phone records and see who's because anybody who's getting high, usually the last person like you call a weed man, usually be the last person that you might call. You call a coke man, the pill man, whoever it is, he's in your phone records. They can see that. So you're going to go down. Oh, yeah, man. I, I Automatically. Remember, listen, listen, I just interviewed, you know, the two Nigerian brothers who were involved in that Jesse Smollett yeah, fake, yeah, definitely. fake attack. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Right. One of them was sort of a middleman for, like, the for uh, uh, Jesse buying cocaine and ecstasy, right? He, he admitted to it on the stand and everything else like that. He was the middleman. And he was saying how, I remember we talked about this, Jesse would pay him with, like, Venmo and, like, PayPal. And I'm like. <laughs> You're leaving a trail. Who does that? What, you want purchase protection in case you get some bad coke? You want your money back? What the fuck? Who pays for drugs with Venmo? I believe he used Venmo only. So, well, he asked me to help him get it because, you know, an actor going out to, first of all, he's not from Chicago, so he, he doesn't know too many people. So he asked me to procure certain uh, drugs for him and I would help him out at that time I was working as a bouncer at a club or at a, a rooftop spot so I could I knew people you understand that do certain things like that so he would ask me if I could help him get certain things and I said sure so I never so I, I wasn't selling drugs to him I was just like the middleman but like I said, in today's world, people just want to be fast people, and loose listen, with it. Listen, people and, you think they're smart. Next thing when, you know, everyone's caught. Listen, you people think you're smart when there's somebody always smarter than you. Yeah. So even that whole fucking stupid sh plan that they put together, <laughs> you think the feds or, or the police are not smart enough to notice some bullshit? Oh, yeah. Or to question y'all and figure out this some bullshit? Oh, they find they're out right away. They're going to so many questions. Yeah. Bro, yeah. these people are fucking, are like therapists in your brain, bro. They can fucking get in your mind. Yep. They, come on, so... I mean, it is what it is, but yeah, the fentanyl shit is crazy, and I'm not saying anybody does nobody deserves, deserves to die, and nobody deserves to go to jail. Yeah. I don't blink, wish that on anybody. What I'm saying to you is, me selling drugs in my day, it wouldn't be worth it for me to catch a murder charge. I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go get a nine to five, bro. I'm just gonna work a regular job because yep. this shit ain't worth it. I'm not gonna catch a murder charge for selling him one bag of fucking dope or <laughs> yeah. or bag of coke. He died. Now his parents, and not only that, you hear the, the parents will come look for you too. Mm. You hear that a lot in the streets, like in the suburbs, and we, the parents will come fucking kill you too, because you just killed their son. So they'll come yeah. kill you, and then you got to worry about the police on your back, and now you got to worry about a murder charge. Yeah, you know, hustlers are gonna do what they do. You know, I don't knock anybody to hustle. I was yeah. the same way too. But for me, catching a murder charge or for sale, mm -mm. it ain't worth it. exactly. Well, before I let you go. You have a show coming up in New York City. Yeah, I got a show April 26th, Sony Hall. I got a lot of surprises. Y'all mm. check it out. I got some people coming out. It's going to be a movie. Big, big. Shout to DJ Chuck Chill Out. Mm. Shout to uh, Robbie Rob. Mm. Shout to my man McGee. And shout to Sony Hall. We making it happen. All the promoters there. It's going to be a movie. April 26th. Don't miss it. I got Welcome to the Culture. I'm still dropping stuff online. Shout to my guy, Olu. Shout to Daniel, Joe. Um, I got the shirts, Passport Boys. Yeah. I got the Weekend See Me's. Armand, hurry up with my fucking shirts before I see you, man. I'm tired of waiting <laughs> on your phone.
<laughs> fuck, I got to do this. I got to put you on blast to get my shit. I'm on. I need the weekend. You can't see me. Um, I got the weed strand coming out. Shout out to Steve LaBelle, Burna, um, Green Label, Greg, um, Passport Boys. Weed strand is coming next. Is this your first solo New York show in a while? Yeah, this is my first. First. Oh, solo. Solo show. No 50. Uh, no banks. No banks. You know what I mean? Just me. Making myself hot. Thanks to Vlad. Thank you. Vlad, Thank you, you. I got to give him his flowers while he's here. Thank you. He made me hot off this platform. I'm glad I was able to contribute to, to this type of success. And then I got to shout all over the platforms, The yep. Breakfast Club and Math Hoffa yep. and all the websites and YouTube. This is 50. You know, all the, all, the, all the people that, you know, support and watch. And more and more important, all the people that watch, and let me do them YouTube numbers. I love y'all, and we're signing out. Flat TV, make some noise. Let's go, y'all. Woo! We out of here. Peace! Yeah.